別にねウィンズを見てる時もあれば後ろを見てる時もあるので、うん、前のプレッシャーが強いさあ手前分断ですねこの構成だとサポートが飛んでいくことはできないのであっあここでビリアンされましたね小太郎の前に残っていた一つに触れてしまった小太郎ああっはじかれた少し時間を置いてのヒッテバシリといったところで一気にアライズがエリアに侵入していきますさあただここでオーバークロックさあオーバークロックを抜いたホーファークここに対してワイドットがアルティメットを抱えている状況ですがさあオーバークロックを抜いたホーファークが暴れましたーオーバークがあまりにもフリーディールすぎるいやーこれはやりたい放題さんからのラッシュみたいなのをやっていると思うニコキャスリーなんだこれはいや,いやこれはギリギリまだ耐えられますそして龍拳ですさあこの間にワンキルほぎ取っていきましたヒラリーを落としましたそしてかなり最前線で控えていますアニちゃんに対してはカザキリでしっかりと捉えていきましたさすがのハイテーラウイウェですね1人で3キルおお追加のキルまで生まれています素晴らしい忍者お止まりやすいですからね、はい、さあ龍拳に対しては1と3を食らいながらもあっとあっ龍の中龍の中でした龍の中に入っていました龍拳で龍同士光り合ったんでしょうかそしてここから実上げてきた上げてきた3人抜けえっ生かして、えー、まずは僕にプレッシャーかけてからってところなんですけどもフックオーバーショックおっ引っ張ったーノースリー守りの形を整えていきますただナノブーストプレッシャーはあまり機能せず逆に空気がヒルを取ったね<笑>さあ前のめり前のめりにいきますいやーこのドゥンフィストコピーはかなり刺さる、ね、さあこのダブルタンクシステムマウガのドゥームヒストも追いかかってくるこれはアクの以外の何もないしかしどうだいやこれは溶かしきる逆に切りましたね誘い込んだかむしろしかもダブルキル一気にセカンドクリアいや素晴らしい立ち回り、はい、さあしかし正面の当たり合いではバレルの方がダメージ上回っていますそしてクラウドまたクラウドあれもうクラウドのキルで今のところ全て止まってますよクラウドクラウド,クラウドと重ねていきましたバレルチームキルそして左からこんにちは新鮮です苦しいですねまだパンティアアルティメットほとんど誘動できてないのできたー上からあーこれはいいキャプティブさん入った夜明けの光に続きましたさあ,あそして残党狩りもお手の物これは完全にクラウドゲーミングですね間違いないバレルは今のところプレイオーダーマッチです苦しい状況をこじ開けたのはワイドッツのデスブロスムいやただですね今これリスポンが圧倒的にレバティ側に近いんですよアライズ側は人数を稼いでいるので、ね、はいなんとか命はつないだが苦しいのは依然アライズアライズはかなり苦しいと思いますこれはさあこれが最後のウェーブかお互いにアルティメントがないバニラ状態これドゥームあもなくレストのサウンドバリア上がったがハリーワンキルさあこれはサウンドバリアがさあハルチェーンここはレストのサウンドバリアが間に合った,合ったさあこれは潜在一流の後期しかしホーファックがなぜかワンキルいやただアスターもこうキルしてるさあアライズ残り7メーター詰め切るかこのマウガが溶けないこのマウガが硬い硬すぎる時間を稼がれるとまずいぞどうにかしなければいけないが無慈悲のサインドバリア重ねての傷ずれ走りそしてゲージ入ってもたまったさあ後ろからマウガが寄ってきているさあこのハリーのオーバークロックなんとかワンキル生み出したい生み出してくるはしかしワイドットのスパスム間に合った間に合ったアライズ残り3ペーターいけるかいけるのか金銭機能大逆転アライズプロジェクト成し遂げた大きな大きな一生いやしかも追加で抜いている残党狩り押し引きの判断というのがインソムニアが二部がありますさあこれはリスマイまで制圧するような勢いですがあれああれあっビこれ気づいているかえあ誰も気づいていないぞこれは自然的な C9 が誰も気づいてないあのイーソムニアどうしたんだ伝説のオーズブラストで線であったような後ろを見てさあカートが誰もカート
に気づいていない誰もだったこれオーバータイムが発生オー,ーかオーバータイム発生しているさあカートまさかのフィニッシュ何が起きてるんだドライバーバンディによってカートフィニッシュ<笑>単独運転成功です
My name's G Clep. With me, we have Wolf. It is time for Last Chance Qualifiers here, Wolf. And That's it's right. An exciting day. Last Chance Qualifiers and Seed Deciders. So we're getting very yep. close to playoffs. Obviously, we had a regular season finish up now, but now seeds need to be decided, and a few teams have their last chance to qualify for those playoffs. So very exciting as well. Today will be the start of our new map pool system. We'll talk a little bit That's about right that too. later on. So big day. We'll see what Japan's read on the meta is. Again, they took Malga out of the game. They did? Uh, I mean, not Japan, <laughs> but okay. Team 4 decided, you know, put some nerfs down. And uh, hey, Malga Watch, good job, developers. Malga Watch was pretty fun. No, it wasn't. But only, it was, only for a week. Then. Only for a week. <laughs> it was a limited time only meta. <laughs> and now it's back to Echo Tracer, it looks like. I like how you put it. And of course, with a lot more tanks and DPS available on top of that. So it can be kind of confusing because we're doing last chance qualifiers and seeding together in one day because we will be like moving in and out from the last chance qualifiers as, as we have a lot of papers to go through, lots of screens to go through. So we will explain all that to you once again. Here it is. Uh, we have a longer stage one compared to NA and EMEA, but we're in, just remember it as we're in week five after last chance qualifier, we hit the last stages and then into Asia. That's right, we're in Japan today. Of course, we will have the same format moving into Korea this weekend. And then here are our teams. Now, <gasps> they're split up into one seeding. One team is gone. Yeah. Oh. But it's not Namakuji Brothers, so it's oh. fine. <laughs> uh, Nyam Gaming did not qualify for this uh, portion, but you can see the seeding teams as well as the LCQ mm -hmm. teams um, to see who's going to get those final playoff spots. And, you know, that, that is going to be the cut. Now, here's the exciting part. So, oh, yes. Asia only has this new pool, and we have, of course, Oasis and Busan added to control, Parisio, Eichenwald, and Numbani added to hybrid, Kings Row has been removed, and then we have Junkertown and Havana for escort, as well as the map order doesn't necessarily matter. So yes. the losing team will have the opportunity to pick from any map type after control. Yes, and it cannot be controlled twice in a row. So and it can't be any map twi yeah, type twice. It can't twice. be any map twice. And Asia only, those three are Asia only, except for that, it's gonna go through all the map pull. And of course, Busan Oasis, very uh, very popular map all over. The fact that we have a bigger map pool, I think will give a lot more variety for the teams to choose as we hit more important matches towards the end of the season. And we have a lot of data today to show you guys. Here's the, I believe this is all from week four. Yeah. Uh, not just the maps, but also a lot uh, of data from the players. So you can see those are pretty heavy skewing towards certain maps being banned. Uh, New Queen Street, especially at 63.9%. So you can see that with this skew of Ilios being banned almost every time, Hollywood being banned almost every time, Dorado being banned almost every time, it's just, it, it wasn't that interesting of a map pool with our old system. So we're changing it up a little bit here. I know it, it's somewhat of a controversial choice. Like some people really like this. Some teams like to have a smaller pool. They like to have a little bit more control, but this is going to be a rule set we're experimenting with here for this first season going into playoffs and of course the LCQ, et cetera. But uh, I hope you guys like it. I think it's going to be fun to experiment and, and grow um, teams' understanding of a larger pool. As in terms of picks, same story here. Lee Jong Tower, massively By favored far. in regular season, 58.3. Blizzard World as well. Esperanza also massively favored. Mm -hmm. Suravasa over New Junk City as well was pretty high, although we didn't normally get that far. And then Circuit Royale also was the highest uh, picked escort map. Yeah, Circuit Royale ended up being actually a very highly chosen map, and that's where we got to some see some widow duels happening from you know, lots of Japan and also Korea. So also, some interesting maps there. In one more point, also Ilios never played. Yes, never a never. single time in Japan, not even one game, which is so funny to me. There, there was one game in Korea, though. Yeah, one game. <laughs> so, so I think that shows a lot and tells a lot about the map pool of how. Teams actually think about the map pool at least. And this was actually yesterday what happened off of the broadcast. And the first day of the LQC will actually be off of broadcast, not just for Japan, also for Korea. So this is the result of what they had yesterday. Yeah, not really shocking results. Pandia takes out Hayabusa and then Arise Project is able to 3-0 Namakuji Brothers, who then in turn take out Hayabusa Gaming in that final game yesterday. 
uh, only dropping a single map to Hayabusa. Otherwise, kind of a tier list here in terms of our uh, teams trying to fight their way into LCQ. So these will be uh, the LCQ teams. Of course, the victors, um, Namakuji Brothers here and Arise. Um, as Nyam was already eliminated, Hayabusa also uh, ended up dropping down in the games yesterday, losing both their matches. Yeah, so Namakuji defeating Hayabusa there, which means that Hayabusa will not be making it. All you need to know from LQ LCQ is that two out of the four teams will be making it up along with the seeded teams later on. So that's that. With Hayabusa already gone, we just have to find out one more team who's not going to be making it. And very likely we'll find that out. We'll starting yeah. with Pandia versus Arise today. So if, uh, for example, Pandia beats Arise, which we expect, mm -hmm. they will then move into the playoffs and then the winner of the loser, assuming you know it's a rise, for example, will face off against Nubi Namikuji Brothers. The winner of that mm -hmm. uh, will, of course, move into playoffs as well. So double elimination bracket here. Yeah. So you can because we had the matches off the broadcast yesterday. We're going to start off with game four. Actually, not leading into game five, which means that they will have to play back-to-back -back matches, which could be stressful in last chance qualifiers. So instead, they're actually playing a uh, match tomorrow, not today. So that's how we're going to be going through last chance qualifier. And then that's also the reason why we have seating deciders today. Yeah, so we will have the seating decider matches today. It's a four team round robin match set of six games that will be played uh, over the, the next two days. We'll have a few of them today, a few of them tomorrow. So the, uh, the teams, of course, will be based on their score here in this round robin seated into playoffs. So. We don't actually do our seating just completely based on the round robin format as it's live patch, right? There's a lot of changes that go on through the season. So mm -hmm. you get one big opportunity here in this final week here to actually decide your seating. So you could end up seeing some upsets here and maybe teams like Insomnia move up in a big way. Yeah, maybe one of the seating team matches war back in Malga patch and then they have never fought, never fought each other since then. Then we might have a different result. You never know. And these are going to be the four teams going through the seating decider. We'll be having three matches each, uh, coming down to six matches in total. Let's see if there are any changes in the standings that we see currently on the screen. Yeah, so these are the standings going into this, but of course we don't have any wins or losses for these teams. They will be playing today. And here's today's schedule. So we start off, as you mentioned, with Last Chance Qualifier Game 4. The winner will go directly to playoffs. The loser has to beat Namakuji Brothers in order to get there. And then for our seeding deciders, the two matches we have today are Veril versus Rivadi and Insomnia versus Six Blow. Insomnia famously beating Six Blow last week. Huge upset there. We'll see if they could do it again here. Veril versus Rivadi. Seems like on paper it should be Veril favored, but Rivadi has surprised us a few times this season. So would not be shocked to see if that one comes in to be good. But this might be the best single day of J Japanese OWCS we've had so far this year. Yes, until now, it should be very close matchups as this is still the winners coming out from 5th to 8th place starting off with that. And the top four going against each other basically will have more of that continuing from Japan. And going into our first match though, here is Pandia versus Arias Rogic. And we see the roster from Pandia and talk starting as as you can, you, as you might have you might have guessed, but we're not going to see that manga much. No, I don't think so. Nevis and uh, Mimosa, of course, bring out the support line, and then Zessen and Sanyo in DPS. Zessen has a pretty wide hero pool. I do think that his Genji was pretty impressive. We might see Docs go back to the Zarya. That could be something that we do see coming through if they want to play Protect the Cassidy. They want to mm -hmm. play Put the Genji um, with a bubble and, and try to build up Dragon Blades, play around that ult combo there. Definitely a strong combo that we have seen in other regions as well. So that's something that we could see this team do that they have done before with the starting lineup. Yes, yeah, certainly as this is the expected roster and they can certainly, because the end result from last time when they faced against AP was a 3-0 and I believe it was before the Malga patch. So that might be, we might have a repeat, but it's been a few weeks at, at least since that time. So you never know with this roster, Harry, Y, and Zerafi actually starting today, not Dan one. So yeah. that's a change. Yeah, definitely and a big change. And Lieutenant Nest. Lieutenant Nest having some fantastic Lucio games uh, last week, and definitely a pick to watch out for here. If you are a Pandia, especially on control, there's a lot of places environmentally where it can be hazardous to your health if you get booped off. Howdy has been huge. Now let's talk about some of the stats between these two teams because these teams are actually a lot closer in mm -hmm. terms of these numbers than you might think. Like team fight win percentage is actually higher here for Arise, but you see the team fight win percentage after first kill also higher 
for them. Even though they come in as underdogs here, I think Pandia has played a lot more scrappy games. When Arise win, it's often off the back of getting one single pick and then cleaning up the team fight after that. Whereas Pandia have turned fights around with good ult economy. They've done a lot of different stuff in terms of Okay, it looks like the fight's going bad, but a really nice combo comes through. A really good clutch play from their DPS lineup ends up carrying the fight for them despite a tough start. So, I look at this matchup, still Pandia favored, mm -hmm. but Arise, their team fights and their pick-based compositions we've seen have been so good. But when we look at these numbers, uh, the map veto was for the entire round robin, but these numbers are only from week four. And if you remember from Japan, they actually had a few days into uh, week four with the Malga patch. So you have to take that in into account of how things turned around a little bit here as we did have patch on day three i believe in week number four so nepal will be our starting control map so we are going to be going back to an old favorite on this one no busan no oasis for our first series today but we'll see if that changes of course going to our next ones the loser will have map type and map selection so mm -hmm. you know there's an extra advantage you're going to have as the loser going into these best of five starting today and going into the poll, again, I favor Pandia. I think they're the stronger team, but we'll have to wait and see what Arise has planned for us. Yes, I do agree, as Pandia, I think, is a strong favorite. But the fact that you choose, even if you lose, you choose the map, so the winner would also get to know the map afterwards, right? So you can't really predict 100% what the map is going to be even after this. So I believe the game is being formed right now with the lobby. And as soon as the game is ready to go, but we haven't seen Nepal that much. To be honest, compared to Lee Jong, compared to any other maps. So we'll see what happens. Here is game number one between Pandia and Arise Project. Okay. Expectation, a little bit of Echo Tracer, although on this first portion of Nepal. Can definitely see some Ramatra, could definitely see some mm -hmm. Orisa. Yes. And Zerafi is gonna be showing yeah. the Ramatra for now. Yeah, and a lot there'll be a lot more Sojourns, I think, because uh, less of a air ground control where you can do direct shot into the control zone. And Zerafi's showing Ramatra. Interesting. Uh, I was expecting a lot more Orisa as I say that just with the headshot starter. That's probably first blood already going to point Pandia. The rest project is backing off. Not totally, but only off to the side. Pandia might be overextending a little bit. Let's see if they can get the extra kills. There it is, two more. And then slowly they'll be retreating back to the point as the point unlocks. That was a clean follow-up there after that pick comes through from Zessin. Just blowing up the enemy sojourn and then getting onto the point here. It'll be a solo cap so they can still maintain control of this choke point here. As the mm -hmm. sojourn matchup here between Zess and Nahari is going to be so critical, especially now that obviously Zessin has a massive line of sight advantage. Uh, but what's kind of interesting from a start is actually the Moira. Moira was a good pair with the Reaper, but still good with Ramatra, but not the most common that you can see from the support line as the Rise Project. Going up to the second floor, trying to contest Zessin Sanya, going very low, has to be safe with the field coming out from Navis. Trade Sanya down. getting for one more. Yeah, this is a low health Arisa will ult. Yeah, already with the Terra, just in on, with another strike. And Jerafi has no idea, can't even touch the ground, was stuck there from the team, uh, from the opponents. Hadi though, responding one back. Yeah, probably wants Seems to... Seems like he's still alive, registering some kills. Yeah, just wants to regroup as soon as possible there, um, see if he can get an exit kill as he does so. Will be the recap coming through here from Pandia. The fact that Arise were able to even get a cap there at all is kind of a miracle, and it will buy them some additional time here. They do have the coalescence for this next fight. Maybe they can break through this choke point with it and try to take out Docs first, front to back here. Otherwise, this is going to be such a difficult fight to win. They can use the coalescence to get Lieutenant Ness sound barrier up. That is probably the. Oh, that oh. Pulse bump going to two. Sanyo didn't even see him blink there. That well, was really quickly done. Forget everything I just said. It's going to be a reset, and we'll yeah. go again. 55%. At and... least they didn't drop the coalescence on that one. <laughs> There's a lot of ults uh, built from Arise Project at least. So, oh, was that? Yeah, I thought it was almost another kill. So Arise Project having a tough time coming into the control. Well, they did have an initial flip with 19%, but that's another kill from Justin Hari. Just having a rough day of a start today. Yeah, and you know, this is the kind of way Pandia often wins these fights, is just by Zessin finding a pick. Here's the Coalescence to push through the choke. Mm -hmm. With the Coalescence, find some value. space, but already spending one. As Hari, yet to chase, there's Zerafi, trying to contest. 
But this could be the last fight territory if this fight goes on for a long time. There's Justin Sanyo. That's already three kills happening for Pandia. Hardy needs to come out big time, but no way as... The members of Pandia will just be saved by the Immortality Field, which Arise Project does not have! And that will be first game. Yeah, Pandia just tossing the Terra Surge on the point for fun. Very one-sided start to Nepal, as the Ramatra pick is just held at the gate. Mm -hmm. Never got to get value out of it on a, in a straight-up 5v5 teamfight on the point, which is where it's at its strongest. And if you're constantly just getting bullied in these chokes, I mean, this is obviously the... I want to say it's the game-winning play, because this pick on Dahari is what allows them to constantly have this choke point control, allows Sanyo to make plays like this. Dox gets a fast Terra Surge off of it. They had Sound Barrier advantage as well. Didn't even really need it. This game, the Overclock defends this push, and then that's the end of the round. Very one-sided from start to finish, and I don't mind swapping over to Moira and trying to get that Coalescent to get you controlled through as, yeah, the predictions do tell the story. Uh -huh. um, I, I don't mind this Moira pick at all here, G-Clef. The problem is that you need to get control early with it. Otherwise, you're just going to always be outclassed. Yes. As the previous map, did, you did have some other choice uh, for DPS, like May sometimes come out. And there are some other... Oh, again, you're just in with the starting kill on you to follow up. And that's three dead from Arise Project. They do have to regroup big time as... Weirdly, weirdly enough, as Pandia is looking for the DPS support line dead first and then... And then just worrying about the Ramatra af afterwards. Yeah, well, the Ramatra's damage output is so low, and the Orisa, yeah, she can't really circumvent his positioning, but if you just kill the DPSs, you just turn at the Ramatra and kill him last, doesn't even matter. And the Moira healing isn't going to be enough to save him without DPS backup, or short-range DPS like the Reaper you mentioned earlier that would have worked really well with this composition, even a Mei, but they don't have that, so Hari really needs to step it up. Yeah, that certainly is Nepal, as we've had patches, but still the heroes do do work, especially on Nepal, as poking from the side of the Raj Project this time, since having better signs, Hari with the starting kill, just in down. One less member for Pandia, and there's a power slide up to... Dog's playing so much space right now. It's actually insane how much he's able to do here. They are going to lose this fight eventually, but he bought a ton of time as well as ult charge here. And as they reset, he's going to have a Terra Surge for the next push. Mimosa also in the longer fight getting a ton of Sound Barrier charge. So even though this ends up being an extended win here for Arise and they do get some free percentage out of it, I think Pandia going to be very happy with the opportunity they're going to have to now use Rush. The Kitsune Rush to get Docs towards the point. Terra mm -hmm. Surge there with Sound Barrier. And a Pulse Bomb is also at the ready here for Sanyo, so keep track of him. He's been so successful with these this season. Yeah, there's a flip, and Jensen actually struck back to Hari. Hari has to come back from the spawn. There's Core Lessons from a star. Trying to neutralize things, but they are backed off to the side again. Tandia coming back big. No Sound Barrier, as the back line took a whole bunch of damage, but still will be alive. There's Sanyo catching Tracer, and Hari. Overclock catches one. That's one one trade on dogs. The saving deal for Pandia oftentimes. He's trying to buy time here, build as much of that percentage. And Zerpy just is just not having as much impact compared to this Orisa. Yeah, they're trying to buy time here on this point and try to you know get that percentage, the control percentage up a little bit here, and then reset and then try to win a fight here with the uh, annihilation and the sound barrier that they will have available that combo as Y got outclassed by Sanyo in that last fight too, and then Dox killed a dashing hottie who popped Overclock and just dashed into his death. He did get one pick, but definitely not worth it. Pandia in prime control of this map right now. They even have the high ground here. They're being very frustrating. And Xerfi doesn't have that Annihilation yet, but I think they're just going to have to use a Sound Barrier to get him into it. Yeah, it should be coming soon as Lieutenant Ness. That will be the critical timing. Mimosa, though, does have to counter beat for Pandia. That's 49, not the worst. But you do need to flip at that flip first. Uh, Justin popping that overclock, and the beat comes down from the Ten of Nest. Locking all the damage, but here comes a secondary response, Mimosa Beat. And that's exactly when Justin just slides in, gets three kills. There's annihilation. But for what? They're still lacking damage. Doss going very low. This could be the opportunity. That's a tank win. Still losing the back line, and Hari has been gone. On you, Justin. Hold on, Tell that's getting one more. The backline supports are gone. Pandia losing one after another. Close fight here. Sanyo staying alive. He's just carrying Sanyo this one by himself. Was the only one, and Dox is back with a javelin. Somehow, some way, ends up going down to a star, but that was. A game-changing play from Sanyo. Coalesce is not enough to get him onto the point there and buy any further time, so it will actually be the win. 
coming through for Pandia there. Sanyo popping off in those final moments. Looked like the fight was lost. And finally, we finally got to see the Ramatra get an Annihilation off on the point mm -hmm. with some supported healing there from the Moira. You got to see that was the first fight they realistically actually controlled and won. And that was even after Zestin got the pick, then went onto the high ground, was trying to fire at the Ramatra. Just gives you so much sustain when you have that Annihilation rolling and you have Coal not Coalescence, but Moira healing coming through. is one of the highest sustained healing in the game. Uh, that you can have as a Ramatra on a point like this. He gets out of line of sight. Then they win that fight initially until Sanyo comes through and just cleans up house and basically 1v3s, pops off, and then they win the, the round, they win the map. So close call there for Pandia. They would have at least had to force multiple mm -hmm. more team fights, but Sanyo said, no, I got this for you guys right now. Yeah, that was insane. Uh, I believe Justin went down about 20 seconds ago and Tracer was actually doing tons of damage, surviving, even had the free recall. Seemed like he wasn't even used, forced to use the recall no. for a long, long time. Another reason why he was able to pick up at least three by himself. So there's two things I think happening here in this series so far as we have the DPS line of a Pandia outclassing their opponents on both roles, both mm -hmm. the Tracer and the Sojourn. And then you have a compositional problem where without DPSs, this Ramatra can't really get anything done, even though it's a good comp and it does make sense. If your DPS lineup is dying every time early, then who kills the Orisa? Mm -hmm. That's the question they ha they don't have the answer to. And also, Orisa, once Orisa is also already in the capture zone, Ramatra just has a lot of cover of a time to actually go in to get the capture. Once you're defending from Ramatra, maybe you have a better chance to actually to build the ult. But once you're trying to go in, notice how slowly they were approaching. It wasn't because of their speed, it was because of their team comp, and they had to really stay together to not lose anyone on the back, first of all. And the Katsune Rush was used really well to get them onto the point after they lost that first cap, but they had the Terra Surge ready, they were able to rush in and get onto the point. Zessen, no fear, just dashing in, getting lining up the headshots, the Railgun headshots, then gets high ground. He played so confidently, and Hadi has had some good moments this season for sure, but Unfortunately, in this matchup, he looks like he is a little bit out of his depth, and maybe that means we'll see a compositional change moving into our next map, oh, uh, yes. which we don't know what it's going to be just yet. Yes, uh, AP, I'm sure they had some maps ready to go. Don't even know, not just uh, if it's going to be hybrid push or flashpoint escort. We, don't, we actually don't know what it's I going to like be. I feel like in Korea, we're probably going to see teams just pick a lot more hybrid, hybrid Yes, a lot of I hybrid. Think, I think in Japan, anything can happen. Japan might go for push or escort. I think more of a or older classical style maps, I think are a, a lot more fitting. Yeah, I mean, if you want to run this comp too, that what we're seeing here with the Ramatra, hmm. I'm looking at the, the map pool right now. It's not great for it. Like, to, Havana like, might be like your best bet, but that's of course only if you can get to B, which yeah, can't. Well, so you could go to Rialto. Yeah, or like a Shambali. So some escort maps. There has been days where we could play, technically play some a lot of Ramatra from Flashpoint, but he's been nerfed a couple of times. Oh, so we, coming oh, in. So we do have a sub. Is that the only sub from Pandia? Looks I was expecting like... a few more subs to come from AP. Like yeah. XD is still there, and Dan Wan is still there on the bench. Yeah, we'll see. Um, Dox is coming out. It's a little bit surprising to me, as he's kind of been the mainstay for them, even when it wasn't Malga. So. A little bit surprised to see that sub, but we'll see what the what else is coming through. Looks like nothing. It doesn't look like we are going to have any subs for oh. um, for the other side. Arise has a pretty huge roster, so you do see a lot of subs from them from time to time, but just confirming, and I don't yeah, see I don't it. see anything else extra don't other than so. Pandia, right? So, yeah. looks like that's it. Um, We'll see once that map is decided. Obviously, it's going to take a little bit of time to, to get that substitution rolling and stuff like that. But I, if they want to run this, I think Rialto would probably be my pick. I don't think they should run this, by the way. I don't think they should continue to run Ramatra outside of control. If you want to run it, maybe you could also take us to Flashpoint and mm -hmm. play Suravasa or New Junk City. Both of those are pretty decent for it. I'm not saying it's great. Honestly, it's not, it's not very strong right now. It's not very <laughs> meta. But if you really want to continue to play this style and that's what you prepared for today, those are some some maps I could lean towards. Or also like maps like Numbani, uh, some new addition to the map pool that the team, the opponent team might not have practiced at all because you only had, oh, of course this news was out for at least a week plus of time, but there are a lot of maps to practice from. So maybe go to, into Numbani, of course. Numbani is another hot map along with Colosseo that will get uh, changed in the future. But for now, some teams actually have trouble like holding the high ground sometimes. Yeah, I think, I, if I'm uh, going to this one as Pandio, okay, we're going to Coliseo. Um, this is an interesting call. 
But going to Numbani, I feel like, would be a terrible choice for Arise because <laughs> I think they're just going to get outclassed by the Sojourn of their opponents. Mm. Now, Colosseo strikes me as a map where if you wanted to play Doomfist, for example, you definitely could. And we've seen that a lot from our Japanese teams. You could play Doomfist Echo Tracer, like the week one meta that we saw. You could stick with just going for the Arisa pick here. Sigma has been proven to be quite strong, especially on those first few points uh, or the first few fights um, on Colosseo can be very impactful, but again, with Japan, predicting is not a good idea. We just have to wait and see. As Colosseo, I think what they're really looking for is that once AP Rise Project is pushed all the way far back, they, it's, I don't think it's a good sign. So I think it's really important for them to actually hold it right in the middle, so that you can't, uh, so that uh, Pandia doesn't get to push much because that middle set. The middle glass zone is actually where you can actually fight much easier as a team. I think for as a teamwork, Arise Project has a lot together for individual skills, Pandia. So you don't really want to get out from that zone. As we hit that dump step button for game number two, let's see if Pandia can lead us into 2-0 or Arise Project tying us in 1-1. Statues. Out of all the maps, no, Colosseum. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of like, right? <laughs> Look, we'll there's, a lot, there's yeah. a lot more Overwatch to be played today and this week, so. We'll all see right. how this goes. Look, okay, so they are actually sticking oh. with this, but actually doubling down on it, bringing the May out here. Mm -hmm. And this comp is really good on the first point. Like I was saying, of Colosseo, uh, the first fight can build a ton of May, charge, build a Blizzard when that second fight. If played correctly, use that healing from the Moira to make sure the May could be basically a second tank, second front line for you. Top into Arisa, of course. As her halt, or rather her fortify, Ooh. is very strong into the main. Justin might have overstepped his boundaries a little bit here. With that first kill, going to Arise Project this time. Hadi having an easier time, even Chang. The new Orisa for, for Pandia. Let's see how he moves around. So far, Hari not finding any shots There's isolation here. From, the, from the wall. That's what they're looking for onto Arisa. But, he, but in the meantime, Justin finds one more. Ten of Ness gone somewhere. That's a second. Both supports gone on the back line. And Chang will find the third with Javelin. As Hari strikes back one. So even though, I mean, this is the end of this fight, but even though May can isolate a target, and that's one of the best choke points in all of every push map in Overwatch 2, is this moment right here where they tried to isolate the enemy tank. He's an Arisa, he's got a ton of healing, he has Suzu, and then Zessen finds a flank. And he's like, all right, well, you guys are all focusing down one tank. The whole back line is exposed, kills Lieutenant Ness, and now the Lucio ult charge is 30%, the advantage here for Pandia. Terra Surge is going to be ready. This Blizzard needs to be huge in this fight. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mothra, there's an early isolation with the wall. Can they really find anyone? There's a star. With the help of Hari, we'll be able to get uh, soldier, the opponent soldier once again. And that's one kill, but this robot is still on a push. Rush Project went towards the back, but here's a rotation. Well, did not make it this time, as he was actually trapping a lot of his own teammates. Ne Davis, we found Harry with another kill and so on. This rotation actually working out really well for a Rush Project. Yeah, Pandia though, on the other hand, I think pretty happy with this. Nevis is going to swap over to Batiste, and they're actually glad that they were able to continue to push. They got it up to 43.33 meters. They were able to buy a ton of time off of the clock. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be very difficult for Arise Project to actually match that push here unless they win this fight cleanly. But they do have the tools because they did that with only the Coalescence there. So, you know, with Ramatra ult, with Blizzard here that Y did not use in the previous fight, there's a huge opportunity as Sanyo is looking for that flank angle onto the supports. And from the side angle, there's their feet zoning out. And with the beat. Trying to have the response back, even using the blizzard that went off somewhere else. Did catch the back line a little bit more. But that's Madea striking back now with the overclock. Says he wants to finish this fight. There's a beat with only three members left. Don't know about that. Yeah, not, gonna, not gonna be a big fan of that call myself, G Clef. And now Hari is zoned away, likely to be the last to fall here. Does get Mimosa. Why is a lot of time Ten of Ness that he's the only survive, so the sole survivor from the fight? Yeah, but that so that's was a big that, tool. Yeah, that was a lot of overconfidence, I think, at Lieutenant Ness. If they mm -hmm. can buy time, maybe Zerafi comes back, maybe he drops the Annihilation, they can win that longer fight. But it's such a high risk play, and the chances are so low that you win that. And now the cost is massive because the cart's back in control here for Pandia. 
We're down to 630 now, and they made no progress whatsoever and don't have a blizzard anymore. Yeah, yes. About 40% on that ult charge, and just hit kind of nasty. That's what you get for. That's what he says here. As no ult's available in the front line, I think this going for Pandia big time. Ross Project is trying to delay. And now, robot from extra push. Uh, Pandia is denying them from taking the fight in this choke point where they want to. So they didn't even have to use the Terra Surge there. The walls mm -hmm. are working against the Rise Project. And it's another team fight where Zerafi doesn't have Annihilation dropped on the fight. They don't have the sound barrier anymore. Imagine if Lieutenant Ness didn't use it in the last fight. Could have been super helpful there. As Hari at least going to occupy high ground here. But look at Pandia just ducking and covering. No angle for him right now. He's yeah. trying to find a flank. We'll be taking a longer time. There is a Terra Surge in the Pulse Bomb. Everyone on target. No extra kills. But Zerapi with the Annihilation can't really find the right target. As Pandia will teach around. There's Mimosa. Then on that spine one. Zerapi keeping off the front line. With some extra damage and the post support's gone for Pandia. But I think they're up. They didn't hit the check mark. But should be happy with 62 meters out. Yeah. It's it's really huge that they stopped them before the checkpoint, as you say. But I think, as as you also mentioned, um, the the big win is that they got a huge push out of it, and the clock is now down to half. So Arise Project need to continue this momentum here, and with the Blizzard and an overclock potentially for Hardy, who did have a really good fight there on that last one, maybe they can make this work. But the problem is Pandia now is high ground on this bridge, and it's super strong into what Arise is trying to play around. Oh, this is aggressive from Justin. Look how he's just parse lights up there. Tries is trying to snipe on Hari. They just can't reach him because they're running a main comp. Yeah, he's going to have to overclock. No big shots coming through from this guy. As he does have to hide around the wall. Oh, gets found by Sanya eventually with the low HP. Blizzard not going to be used. There's the block. But might be lacking some damage. Then a nest. Do you really want to force it again this time? He's actually going to hold the barrier. As three members left around the robot. Some trades in the middle. Zerfi getting one more. He's buying more time here. Getting the kill on the Zestin is pretty massive for yeah. a Rise project. Why is not here though? So to regroup is going to be really tough now to get onto that high ground. Lieutenant Nest also in trouble, mm -hmm. but should be able to get out here. And yeah, the see. robot is already on, in the middle, yeah, pushing for a Rise project. Let's now. see if they can get it grouped up here and drop this Blizzard and actually win an impactful team fight where their comp is strongest, then get high ground. That's a two step process Arise needs so badly here to get back into this game. They have the tools. Let's see the execution. Well, some going wide, does some damage in, there's a beat, oh, keeps everyone alive, great timing. Plus, with the Blizzard, so they need to kill, have extra kills on you. 2-1 trade. Essen still free-firing, though. Needs to do a better job with that Blizzard. The uh, Blizzard only froze Nevis as well, g Clef, mm -hmm. and that's a huge problem here. Pandia is just going to ward them off here. Lieutenant Ness dropped the sound barrier to get them into position. The Blizzard only hits a single target, and they don't kill Zessen. He's not caught in the Blizzard. He's got such a fantastic angle. He and Sanyu are just so outclassing their opposition here. Now the cart is rolling. It looks like they should be able to get the checkpoint off of this as well. Maybe a coalescence for the contest. Here it comes. So really good counters coming out from Pandia. Quick start from a star, but... Just to have this pressure out from Pandia. But they don't really have extra follow-up or no big kills happening yet. There's a Matrix. Good wall. Very good wall to isolate. The DPS lineup with the support right there. Why? Doing his work. But losing the tank. Let's see where Chang is up being, up, being held. So push actually happening from back door. But that will be about it. Here's the Rise Project. The full team and Pandia actually losing a couple. Chang just for the delay. And they still are able to deny that checkpoint, which is going to give them some additional time to build the last parts of these critical ultimates, the Mei, the Ramatra. But mm -hmm. they need to get past this high ground here. Now, for the first time, we might actually see Hardy in control of it. Let's see what he could do with it, because this has been the biggest problem for Arise, as they just haven't been able to get them into position as always. There's by. a pulse bomb. The biggest problem has been Sanyo. Uh, Sanyo actually catching all these members on the back. There's a beat. Pandia and the push again happens. The May is just not as effective. Okay, isolation to Orisa, but he's playing so much time alone, not going down. And there's some extra damage. They finally get a kill. But that was without the help of Pandia, they just backed off. Knowing that there's not much of time, less than two minutes now. Yeah, and I mean, Pandia's just got the, the robot under full control. Nevis may go down here, actually not even going to. He gets to teleport back to his teammate. 
And this is a disaster for Arise. They only have 90 seconds to actually get this rolling. Look, Sunken just keeps on getting killed somewhere, and we calls back into fight, Justin, with the overclock. And the Rise Project, they just cannot join and have a 5v5 team fight alone. And now Zessen has this high ground back controlled. And look, finally, the robot will actually push to the checkpoint here. It's what the fourth try it feels like here for Pandia, but they will get it done. And that's just going to be such a long push that Arise is going to have to have. Sound Barrier is their biggest tool for this next fight here. But again, they're fighting around this corner right now. They have the high ground, but Pandia could just avoid them because the time is on their side. They don't have to force. Yes, on top. And old better charged up for Pandia as that's another kill. Pulse bump on the wall riding Lucio. And that was the only two that could have come in about five seconds. There's a terror surge from Chang. And with May dead, that might just be it. 40 seconds, and Rise Project might need to look for a quick regroup for the last team fight that they can. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to regroup, but I mean, the time is, is so low here, but they will get one last fight, but they have to then win every single remaining fight. So they're going to win this fight with Blizzard, without Blizzard, basically, Sound Barrier only. Then the next fight's Blizzard, then the next fight's Annihilation. Heart needs to get high ground. Everything has to go right. You can't afford no mistakes here as Arise, or it's going to be a 2 0 start for Pandia. Look. Can't even join the team because he got hit from far away. That ice wall has to keep himself alive. There's a beat from Tenon Nest. The start of the fight, but no further damage here as the entire team of Pandia backs off, okay? You're going to use have your big tool, but our sound barrier is coming in 10, uh, 10%. Yeah, also Rush is ready to get Chang into position here. And this is going to be a sick combo Striking for them. Striking from the back, love the rotation from Pandia. There's a rush from Nevis to start things off. Blizzard to delay their rotation. Tenon Ness gone, Coralescence to heal that back off, but two gone already, and Padilla might just have a second win. There's a beat just to secure, with the opponent Lucy already gone from the ground. So if he trying to do what he can around the robot, Mahari with the overclock needs to fight four or more by himself. Not gonna happen this time, as with Lassar gone, that should be it. But why back on the robot? Well, what can he do alone against the five? Trying to delay, but that will be the end of it. A 2-0 start here for Pandia. Pretty dominant performance. Only a few lost team fights across both maps, G-Clef. And we saw, obviously, a big attempt here to try to run the Ramatra May. So they did what I wanted. I was like, if you're going to run Ramatra, play Reaper or May. You know, try to find a way to actually make this comp work better. Like, uh -huh. all in on it instead of just kind of doing half and half. But once again, Hadi was absolutely controlling the Sojourn matchup, and then the Tracer they couldn't realistically deal with because they didn't have any great CC in a way to lock the Tracer down, and yes, uh, that was a big problem. Colossi calls you. There are some some spots, but only a few spots for the Blizzard. I actually think May's much better, much much better for on the POW compared to Colosseo. Yeah, and it was their map choice, AP's map choice, and coming out with May, I think a lot uh, a lot of communications. Uh, might not be going according to plan, even even with their map pick. So because of the new uh, map system, the loser will keep on ch selecting the map until until they lose, I guess. And, and May is a hero that gives you a lot of frustration if you have a coordinated five stack you're playing against in solo queue or something like that. You have a team that's that's really working strongly around those Blizzard timings with the Ramatra. It's super frustrating, but against a pro team that has an incredible sojourn like uh, Pandia does with Zessen. They just outrange you. They out they outpoke you, they chip away at you, and then the May, yeah, she can right click, but she's never gonna be able to match that Sojourn damage. So your Sojourn mm. has to be threatening enemy Sojourn so they can't get line of sight, so your May can get into position. And it just wasn't gonna work out that way. Yes, uh, which means that Hottie needs to be in position with May, with that Ramatra together, providing damage, right? But the Orisa was always hiding off to the wall to the side so that if the Sojourn is nearby, if it actually if she, if Sojourn comes nearby the main fight territory, the Sojourn immediately goes down. So that was one of the hardest part for Hardy to actually join. There was lacking of damage, as you mentioned. But that is 2-0 for now. As Rise Project, as we kind of thought of before the broadcast, it is going to be a very, a very hard up, up, uphill climb for them here as Pandia certainly in the lead with 2-0. But when we come back, let's see if there are any changes made from, the, from both teams.
And welcome back everyone to our first match of the night here, week five, Japan. Last chance qualifiers before we get into the setter matches. And right now, Padilla just steamrolling things with a 2-0. And we another question is that we still don't know what map we're going into for uh, map number three. And before that, like do we have any roster changes? I don't think so. I would like to see some. Um, um, especially for a Rise project. They have XD, they have Dan Wan, so a lot. Uh, of potential changes. We've seen some really weird stuff from this team. Like in week one, Y was playing support, was listed as a support for this team, and has switched over to DPS for most of the season. Um, XDN has played a bunch of different stuff as well. I think he played tank in week two for a mm -hmm. little bit. Uh, then you have Dan Wan, who's MIA today, and then you have Zerafi, who's usually a support but has now been moved to tank uh, to play Ramatra and like Lieutenant Ness and the Star have been the support lineup for a few of their last matches, but. This team just doesn't really have like a core roster. And you remember like there's been teams famous for, for swapping things up in the past. We've seen some tank players go to DPS and mm -hmm. DPS players go to tank. We've seen like Bumper play Lucio. We've seen Hoxo play Lucio, you know, in, in Overwatch Apex um, back in, in the day for OGN. Like, I, but this is this doesn't feel like it's a cool strat. This feels like something, something strange is going on. And this team hasn't really figured out what it wants to do. Cause like you mentioned, like Hardy just does not look as good today as he has in the past. As we're going to Flashpoint, we're going to Suravasa. And uh, it is not map nine. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. There's that's, been some, there's supposed some, to be three. <laughs> there are some strange there are some strange things with this font. Like for example the five looks like an upside down two. Uh-huh. Um there are some strange things with this font, but you guys will get used to it. Yep. That's the sound. Yeah. I think we're going in. That's Flashpoint. Might be the final one between this, uh, in this series. Pandia versus the Rise Project 2 0 now. And one thing to note, of course, Doc's back in. And we do have Zerafi still on tank. Okay. And See what he wants to play. Because, like, this map also, or this map type Flashpoint, because both Flashpoint maps are fairly similar in how they operate, is one of the ones you could run the Ramatra on. So I think it's a good choice for a Rise project if they want to keep rolling with this, uh, which I guess is going to be the case. And yes, not the worst. I have to agree, but... I still do think there are better options, or better choices of, of maps, but I think it's exactly what uh, Zerfi feels comfortable on with the Ramatra. Yeah, and no I think the whole team is kind of operating around him mm -hmm. for that reason, as you say. Noticing that he's, he has never changed it into any other hero from the tank, so that might be his favorite and the main. And then team juggling around him for now. Nev is having a fun time here on the Kiriko, dancing around at the doorway. The pretty Will cool skin. Teleporter into Tracer Swap here. So, no echo whatsoever. Just going back to the old favorites here at the beginning of Japan. Tracer Sojourn versus the May. Once again, Hadi, he has to lift this team on his back yes. and carry if they're going to win this one and bring us to a fourth map. Yeah. May for Flashpoint, I think it's better than Push, to be honest. So, this makes a lot more sense compared to our second map as Hadi again has a lot of contest against the guy who was just shooting at Justin, the opponent Sojourn. Let's see how the snipes come down on the rail guns. Approaching into the contesting point in the middle. And letting Arise Project take the first steps and immediately responding here is Arise Project. Dogs and contesting. Dog. Sangyo, not this time. It's not gonna work. Ten of less. Finding a kill. And Padilla, do you just back off the losing tracer? It seems like they are willing to just rotate to the side, but can't really get all the way off. Still do have four members left as here's Zerapi. Finds one more with the Venom Nest. This broken up fight is really good for Arise if they can continue to win it here. Still have control over the point, taking up very quickly. And so much build here for Nest. Oh, Sanyo's back in fight, man. Navis getting that last hit. Along with Sanyo grabbing extra. Why is still there? I believe this is just a 4v3 at the moment. Coalescence. Okay. We want to keep this fight going on, but it is just why on the point as this... Okay, they, they're actually having the percentage, though. Yeah, they never dropped the cap. And that Blizzard now. Oh, Hadi comes big time. Immediately finding two kills the moment you come back into Flashpoint. 
And Pandia is actually responding them, uh, responding perfectly against them. Docs will be able to find a few more with the Terra Surge. But this is certainly a messy fight. Everyone just coming back from the spawn, I, looking I for mean, what you can. Pandia really whiffed this. Like, they had so many ways they could have just grouped up and actually won the fight, but they trickled in. And Arise was like, I'm opting into this. As soon as they saw the Coalesce, they mm -hmm. should have been like, all right, well, we back off. We win the next fight. And I don't think the Coalesce was necessary because it, it ruined their ult economy. But then Pandia just kept trickling and docks, committing the Terra Surge. There's a big question mark for me because that would have been a huge way for them to get the first cap on this next point. Instead, Arise Project have a massive ult lead here as well. Sonny, you're looking for a pulse. There's a stick onto a star, and that's going to be Moira gone for Arise Project. And let's see what they they keep on contesting for now. Four members grouped up. There's a beat from Best and the Overclock with the Blizzard. Everything grouped up. Mimosa doesn't save Justin, but four members might be enough with the beat. As Sanya responds, Hari takes one along with him. Here's how he's buying some time because Zerfi was very low HP and eventually will be found by Mimosa. And everyone from Arise Project getting cleaned up from the side and Pandia getting the first uh, after losing the first point. Now, this is the first time since we started on this map where Pandia will actually have control of the point. So. They are going to be able to control choke points. They are going to be able to, to poke at this May on approach. Therapy shields are going to be what Y needs to actually get closer and closer to the point. That's how they approach the first point. And now that we're in this one here, Hadi needs his help, of course, with uh, the May slowly pushing forward to actually get on the point. They do that, drop the Annihilation, they can win a fight. Just getting there is the tough part, especially with Zessen this far back. He's trying to operate every time that Ramatra shield is up. He hides, waits for it to get broken. Now he's back out again, overclock. Yeah, and the pulse bomb in the in the middle. Actually, just get found on his own. Why with that headshot? Dogs was somewhat isolated, but here's the response back. Two members gone for a rise project. And yeah, still has somewhat of control here as we hit about 75% with the steam fight. Should be a point for them as we match 1-1 one, one in flashpoint now. Great overclock from Zessin. Played super well around Zerafi's barriers there. And that should be one to one, as you say, moving into this one. Doc's gonna push out here as well, so they can approach the third point even faster here. So now tied up one on one. Oh, it's actually the opposite. Yeah. Both teams expo expected. Yeah, the but that's right. still feels pretty good for Pandia here, mm -hmm. and they're running the tracer. They can move a lot faster than Arise Project can, and of course Nevis can continue to get some information and teleport back to his team. See what Hari can do here as he's running away as fast as his legs can carry him here. Why it needs that blizzard so badly for this fight. Yeah, almost got caught in his isolation. But won't be able to kill with the coalescence and the annihilation. Good response from Arise Project this time. Eliminating a lot of the damage and what could have been worse. As Pandia responds okay, losing three, losing three. Yeah, very and the messy. Other two rotating okay. But this should be the cap for Arise Project now, pretty easily. And Nevis, no ult now for this next fight. They're gonna have Blizzard, Sound Barrier, and they have control of the point. It's so difficult for Pandia to break this because Zessen does not have great opportunity for line of sight. So Sanyo has to do some heavy lifting. If he could find a backline pick, that would be massive, especially if he could do it onto Lieutenant Nest, force his barrier out early. Such a hard fight for Pandia to win, but they don't have time to mess around. 27% as we will to that barrier is coming soon. It has to be careful. It's now locked, there's beats, and the blizzard coming from Y. And Mimosa responds perfectly. Hardy going down super low, and there's a kill from Docs. Oh, he's catching those kills. Justin off to the side. The wall to block for a second. Why well, tried to get a kill, and there's Sanya along with him. I think the extra damage that the team needs. And the Rise Project. I think the, uh, got cleaned up easily when they were trying to focus on to Justin. And why? They're actually getting sniped. They played around his ice block super well. They changed targets instantly. <laughs> and we're able to break him down last, basically, in that fight. Now they're gonna have really nice setup for Terra Surge here. Definitely not unwinnable here for Arise Project. They, they're gonna have some tools to coalescence and help them get onto the point with a good speed boost from Lieutenant Ness. But look at this choke point control right now. Zessen, so far back, is gonna look for another flank angle here, potentially. The overclock for him last time was game-changing. We'll see if he can do it again. Mm -hmm. Pretty good disengage, and also far up, buying time. Uh, Ice to actually Isolate them, but could not actually bring the kill. Even with Coralescence, response from Navis with a rush. There's a kill onto May already. This Pandia diving into the point as after the flip, it's been their percentage after that moment. And it looks like a rise project, even when they have positional advantages sometimes in these fights, they're able to close the gap. They aren't able to win fights without ults. And that this comp obviously struggles to do that a lot of the time when you don't have control and they did have to approach first there, but 
If you can never do it, then Pandia will eventually just win out. They now have Sound Barrier mm -hmm. for the defense here for the final contest from Arise. See if Arise even go for a contest. They actually will not. I think this is the right call. Yeah, just try to regroup, rush for the point, get on it first, use that Blizzard to defend. Asanyo is going to scout this out. See yep. if he can maybe find a Pulse Bomb into the back line. Finally, there's a there's a point. Mir Arise Project this time. They've been having a tough time rotating around the map. And there's a really good kill. Zerfin finds one, though. Justin could not escape from that moment. As 1-1 one, one. going to be gone, but Pulse finds extra star. That's another trade. With the Blizzard dropped even from Arise Project. Need to make more out of this. As with the supports, it's always fight. great to see the supports fight against each other. Oh, well, yeah. Ness does pick up a few critical mm -hmm. kills here. Um, off the back of his teammates, he's get some nice last hits in there. As they will get the first cap here. Had to use the Blizzard, but they still have good tools. As I think for Pandia, you start to feel the pressure a little bit on this approach because you're gonna you're gonna have a rush. But if you end up messing this one up, Arise Project definitely going to bring this to five. You need to win this fight specifically as Pandia with your ultimates. Peter really and drops. Essence down. That's a good push for Arise Project, and the timing is just perfect. Pandia is not ready for what was about to come. Now, this is the scary part for Pandia. They still have the tools. They didn't commit anything to that fight. But now Arise Project can match them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, no sound barrier for them because they use that to win the fight. But I think that was a pretty old efficient way to win this. They're going to have Coalescence to drop with the Annihilation. As Pandia, they opted out of ulting last time. Now they're going to catch Zessen. Zessen was in trouble, but no Ice Wall to follow immediately. So it's actually Arise Project taking so much more damage and response. So it has to pop that Coalescence to keep everyone in the line. Annihilation out. And beam from Mimosa. Everything actually dropped off, off to the side. Dox finds one and Justin to follow. And both DPS gone for Rise Project. This might be might be the flip that Pandia is looking for. They do get it and the team wipe. Yeah, massive, massive win for them as Arise Project commit everything and fail. Pandia shut down the overclock. It's Zessen who kills his opposition in overclock. You can't be losing those battles as Hottie or else you're just not going to be able to win these team fights. You're not going to be able to win this series. And now just trying to build the last part of this Blizzard here for a final approach with a speed boost. The Rise Project completely out of steam here and Zessen controlling them at range. You can see Nevis doing as much as he can to heal Docs up, keep that armor rolling so he can Terra Surge on the defense for this last push. Without Annihilation or Sound Barrier, there's no sticking power in this comp for a Rise Project. Blizzard alone won't be enough, but they gotta try. Yes, Blizzard has to be, has to be landing on few targets, but that's already a pulse one. Blizzard dropped though. So let's see if that helps at all, because two members already gone. Ten and to follow. And Jeffy having a tough time blocking on his own with just the Moira on the back, a star just trying to delay of what he can. This is going to be the match point that Pandia is looking for. Yeah, this in should just be a couple the game. of seconds. Yeah, this should just be the game. As look at this, zessen has got overclock. He's just gonna block him out. The Genji swap, not gonna happen. Not yet, as that's a third from Pandia and the match goes to Pandia in this last chance qualifiers. Of course, the Rise Project, they don't drop immediately, but they will be dropping down to the lower brackets now. And you know what, Namakuji brothers sta stepping up a little bit in recent times, trying to find a little bit more synergy with the Namakuji brothers comp uh, of, of Roadhog and the Hanzo and all of that. Mm -hmm. It's not a comfortable place to be right now as a Rise Project because yeah, I still favor them, but they had some issues with their roster today, seemingly, with their support player playing tank. They got out class. They were at least able to put a composition together that made sense for their weird, unique situation. But I look at the the, the lower bracket, and I think Namakuji Brothers could actually take this. Like, this is not impossible for them. They could be going to playoffs because Arise Project just really did not show up today the same way they were the last two weeks. And Namakuji Brothers improving incrementally means maybe that miracle run for Nozzle could happen. Nozzle? How far? How far can into Nozzle go? At least into top two of the fifth to eighth place? Maybe, because today, Arise Project, they certainly seemed not as far from compared to what we have seen from last week and the weeks before. And maybe something's going, uh, something funky in the, in the roster right now as Zerfi just playing. Ro Out of all the tank heroes in this meta, in this many maps, and their own map choices, double map choices, just for Matra, back he's just to back. Not always a tank player. Like sometimes he is, and this roster, sometimes anybody could mm -hmm. be. I guess somebody anybody could be support, any support could be DPS. Uh but you know, I just think he's not comfortable. So they wanted to try to play May so they could at least play with what he is mm -hmm. more comfortable with. 
Anyways, you and I had different votes for uh, player of the match. I voted for Zessen because I thought he controlled that matchup in the Sojourn uh, matchup directly yes. much better, and it was obviously great in the May. Mm -hmm. You voted for Sanyo. I thought he had a fantastic game. Yeah, both. I think Zessen and Sanyo both created room for each other. So we'll see the player of the matches. I think I believe that is ready from the production. Let's hit that screen. See, because it could be either of them for sure. And the player of the match is Jessen. Jessen's going to take it. I think, you know, for me, a little bit higher impact than Sanyo. Sanyo got a lot of cleanup kills. He did have that incredible moment uh, on Nepal. But, like, this opening pick won them this whole round, basically. <laughs> uh, as he just outclassed Hari nonstop. You can see in this moment, too. Killed Hari on the final map as well, while Hari was popping overclock. Just completely shut him down, completely denied him. And this just was uncontested whatsoever by Arise Project. And Zessa just had free reign. There, there were very few moments where he actually died in a critical moment that cost his team big. He was just in control from start to finish, always controlling high ground, always keeping Hari out of the game, and then just keeping the Mei out of position as well, forcing early ice blocks. Like this one. A shot right there, as both the DPS had so much confidence in their movement, they were just diving in, sometimes overextending. There were some moments, but very little, and eventually paid off so much. As Hari and Lai, the opponent DPS, just no match against these two. Yeah, you see also a ton of those moments as Zessen still leading, by the way. He's been leading pretty much all mm. season long. Uh, he is just always killing Hadi in like almost all of those highlights as well. He's like, oh, Hadi's dead. Hadi's dead. Got him. As, yeah, Pressure <laughs> uh, did end up losing in his last uh, POTM, so ends up falling behind just by one here over Zessen, but could earn it back later on today if they're able to take that series. Yes, Pressure will be playing later today, and also Hofat, our body. Also playing to, uh, today on the second match, so we'll see what happens. Who gets that POTM if they win? If they lose, of course, no chance for that. So this is what I was saying, you know, now as Arise, you have to play against Namakuji Brothers. This is not a comfortable place to be. Oh, man. Uh, now, Namakuji Brothers, definitely the underdogs on paper, but if we see Arise play like they did today, which was not great, not up to their normal standards, you see that the reason why Namakuji Brothers is in lower bracket is because Arise 3 0 them, but maybe we see a different story uh, tomorrow when that G5 does happen. Yeah, that was close broadcast, so don't actually know exactly what happened there. As Namikuzi, yeah, we do. It's Namakuji yeah. Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> but Namakuzi, now they can choose their own map. That's another factor that yeah. they might actually have something else pre prepped up. After watching the match versus Pandia, if I was Namakuzi at home, like, huh, they're not. As good as before, we can actually strike them big time. We might actually go into that last final slot as Pandia secures that one slot out of the four. Yeah, so whoever wins that match, two. that G5 will be our last playoff team. Mm -hmm. But that's only one match we have today. As mentioned to you guys, we had LCQ to start things off. But now it's seeding time. Seeding time, which means all top four teams will be playing. Uh, not just today, also tomorrow. Very exciting matches coming up, as you can see from coming up next. Veril. Versus Rabadi will be our next matchup. So, guys, don't go anywhere. We will take a short break. When we come back, the matches between the top four.
And welcome back everyone to the second match of the night. It is time for that seeding decider. Only the top four gets to play. We're starting off with the first place and the fourth place, which means Vero versus Rabadi. That's right. So Vero here coming in as big favorites. They're big favorites for the whole tournament. They didn't look invincible throughout this turn, but they definitely seem to be our best team. And then Rabadi was able to break their way into top four with some surprising upsets. Mm -hmm. So I think this one is definitely really good on paper, but it may just end up being Barrel outclassing them 3-0. Like if I had to predict, I would say 3-0, 3-1 for Barrel, but Ravadi has given us some surprises as mentioned before. So we'll see what the read on the meta is on this patch, as well as what maps they're going to be taking us to, mm -hmm. because that pool is a lot more opened up now. Oh yeah, certainly this is a matchup that a lot of you have been looking for, along with what's about to happen in our last match of the day too, Insomnia versus Six, Six Below should be another great match coming up soon. Uh, Six, Vero only dropped a single map from the round robin, so it's you can't really think that they'll be losing to directly to fourth place. Uh, I think that's really hard to guess, even if you really want to have that. Maybe in your dreams could be possible, but we'll see what happens because different rule with the maps. So I think there's always a chance to at least get one map off of the best team here. But Vero does seem like still the best, of course. Team Japan from last year. Nico QQ, KSG starting today. And kill out Mint, Mihawk going back between the supports. And Mihawk is really not a support. He's usually just a Widow. A <laughs> Widow player yeah. for DPS. Yeah, we've been seeing mostly Mint, but sometimes they do sub Mihawk in for fun. As uh, KSG has been, to me, I think, a big standout player. Obviously, the DPS mm -hmm. lineup on this team is probably the best in the whole tournament, but KSG has come up in a big way, and I think that that is going to be what shows up the most uh, in this matchup where... Yeah, there we go. North America right there. Hashtag <laughs> N slash America. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's okay, but uh, we will get those values up. But yeah, sometimes the API, you know, with all the AI stuff these days, man... All right, you just so, can't get everything ready in time, and there it is. Yeah, so Junmin Hyuk and Kotaro, they're the, the main tanks. We do see them swap quite a bit, especially Kotaro likes to play Wrecking Ball if they want to run a Wrecking Ball composition, but I think this is going to be the weak point here for Rivadi going into this one because it's just going to be outclassed by KSG both tanks. And mm. Hofak and Harutun, I think, are the hope if you're a Rivadi fan because they have been so good. Hofak, I've been calling him my goat since the very beginning. Honey Factory. Um, a Korean import here for this roster is just so strong mm. at the moment that maybe he gets something done against Nico and Kyuki and then win this series for Rivadi. I think it's going to have to be on the back of him and Haratun's Tracer. Yep. Uh, I think Jummy Nelk needs to step up big time. Even if we have some more Winstons popping up these days, uh, as KSG you know for a lot of big plays on that Winston. And Kotaro basically is a Wrecking Ball player, most likely. So we'll see how that goes between the two tanks. Uh, some more numbers, again, from week four only. As I believe Vero, at least from what I can recall off of my head, did play after the patch, the day the patch actually hit, the post-patch of Mauga. So, I mean, the main takeaway from these stats is not a whole lot since it's just a week four stat line, but Rivadi has won 2% more of the time after first death than Vero. So mm -hmm. that means sometimes even if somebody dies, they can turn those around. We talked about that a little bit in our first series, but uh, again, these stats, because they're so close, not super meaningful. Um, and again, only from week four. We're going to Samoa. Wow. Samoa here for uh, control. So I'm a little bit sad we haven't gone to Busan or Oasis just yet. But Hey, no Lijiang Tower, though. I'm yeah. pretty happy about that. I mean, you know, Lijiang Tower, I'm okay with it, but I haven't seen Ilios yet either, obviously. But Busan and Oasis have uh, been added to the pool, so I'm hoping mm -hmm. we do eventually see them. Maybe we'll see it in our third series. Yeah, so, so just stick with something that we've seen a lot that we're familiar with. Yeah, so without Li Zhang, it's just Buan o Oasis, Nepal, Samoa, Ilios. Uh, still, we can see that teams still doesn't prefer to play Ilios as the map. I believe the fa first game is ready, though. Let's hit that music button. Press it. You just know the exact I know the timing. dubstep button. It's, I just couldn't I'm all do it, it last time with 9K, but you got it all the time. There's Vero versus Ravadi. TC decider match, first map, Samoa. Yes, let's see, especially who we start with the tanks. Keshi on Larissa, Jaminyak on that Winston. Okay, so Might be seeing some uh, team comps changing after they find out. Yeah, I think probably not on this map. 
at least to start is jumping hook's gonna he's played Winston in the past. He's gonna stick with it. Haratune's gonna go over to Tracer. So a little more of a Korean style composition here for Ravani with the Winston Tracer as Veril is gonna be putting Nico onto the Cassidy here That's without right. any protection. So very risky comp here from Veril, but if Nico can get the work done, he can do tons of bursts yes. to the Winston. And here's somewhat of a dive from KSG. Keep a little bit of pressure onto a but no kills. But KSG actually finds a Haratune off the side. He's Start pushing the him. DPS line directly. He's oh, like, I don't man. care. I'm but a tank. So I'm out of control. And Winston just not doing the same amount of drill. That's a third for KSG. Kyuki as well does drop his recall there, looking for some additional pressure and damage. And that should be yeah. a very easy first control of the point here yeah. for Veril. And Jumpin' Hyuk has his work cut out from diving into mm. a Cassidy, especially with Suzu at the ready, is so difficult as Winston will just get burst down so fast. So he needs the rest of his team to follow up, and Hofak really needs to be trying to outrange Nico in these fights and looking for picks. And he's getting pushed by the Arisa, which yeah. is not ideal. And very far away from that Promo Rage. That's an extra tool that you can have later on. There's a big dome early on. We're still already getting chopped down from Nico. This is Beach, so certainly a map where you can use that Cassidy on the back. Safe distance, plenty of damage. Here's Kuki off to the side, Tracer. Pushing them I mean, that's a little the farther. Oh, Hofak. There's one at least. Yeah, but they're going to need to get Jun Min Hyuk back here as soon as possible. They want to capitalize on this. It's a tracer they picked, so she can return very quickly. Hofak trying to use this opportunity to get close mm -hmm. to the point and find the line of sight. And he does find it. But they can barely come into the middle. Hofak dead once again. KSG with that stun big time. KSG, this is what I was talking about. They're trying to back cap. He's going to get a recall. Going to go for the flip almost. But not fully being able to hear Suki with that pulse bomb. There's a flip at least. But we'll be having that team fight loss. All right, well, that's going to be that. 6%, about the lowest you could get, but at least they were able to stop that by some time. As Jumping Hook was like booped, then speared, then blown up the first time, comes in the second time, is instantly deleted. Mm -hmm. OFAC pushed on by KSG, killed before he could actually do anything with that line of sight. KSG is actually corralling the enemy sojourn. And if that is happening to you, it does not bode well for how this series is going to go for Ravati. So here's Jamin Young, falling from the now bottom you see him, now you don't. <laughs> He immediately melted down again as we're looking for some changes happening in the tank, but not yet. There's a beat, oh, almost a solo beat there. Catching Hofak, Harutun goes down immediately. That's a 99% Ravati just has to pop up. Hofak, he's a five kill immediately, but with that barrier, those on point. Barrel with the first point. Jamin Hyuk just getting deleted. No Primal Rage on this round at all. No builds, just blown up every time. I was just like, now you see him, now you don't. We Every time we see the Winston go in, there's just too much damage. KSG's damage, you have Nico doing so much as well as the Kiriko damage getting layered in. And look at this, like, it's just insane. KSG constantly pushing the DPS line, like killing Harutun here and then killing Hofak. Like, that, that can't happen. If, if you're gonna have any hope of not winning this series, but like winning a round of control. Yeah, even with the Cassidy and Tracer, the Orisa usually doesn't get that many kill. <laughs> At least it doesn't show up that many times in the kill feed. Uh, that was kind of interesting as we do not have any change whatsoever from both sides. Still keeping that Winston. Let's see how he keeps up. This time, still not the best map for Winston, I would say. Jumping up. CKSG taking the mid ground first. Go back. Strikes first, though, Kyuki. That's huge. Should be a huge window for them. Taking a big hit. Now taking control. KSG backs off. Just for the time being, here's the contest. Trying to snipe into Hofak. Not being able to do so this time. Here's Harutun. Was pretty silent in the first stage that we had. Beach, no pulse bomb, of course, yet. Has to recall all the way back to Aminok. Has to be careful, but there's a lot of walls that you can use from. Um, uh, Immediately backed off. <laughs> and that's a great cover by Barrow. Losing Kyuki again. Hope back. That's a second on Tracer. And that's why Winston doesn't do well against Cassidy. Hope back still staying alive with the supports on the back, but you do need to come into control. That's what the map is for. There's Nico. Always finding some. I mean, they're nice buying a ton of time. Side. So this isn't horrible for Ravadi. Like they actually are getting 30% here. Yeah, bottom. 
They got a the lot Jedi of time. too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was actually, you know, in a retrospect, I, I gave John Min Hyuk the caster um, but you know, I mean, well enough time for the team to delay further. He came back in the second time. He's got 60% of a primal. Is it ideal? No. Was it great? No. But was it better than it could have been? Yes. And now we're going to have five ultimates potentially mm -hmm. in this next fight if they can keep John Min Hyuk alive long enough to get 30%. He hasn't been able to build 30 on a team fight just yet. And Mint does have that beat ready. ST 13% away. So we'll see who presses that big button first. As most of the heal is going towards that monkey. He's not doing any damage right now, so he's not building any ult. They're losing percentage That's here. That's how quickly they can actually dive into the back line. That's their what their comp is made for. Barrel, four ults, ready to go. He's okay. doing my goat dirty, G Club. He's, he's coming he's in. Him. There's that Kiriko Rush. He's doing it from both sides. And Barrel for the time being backing up. Hartun finds a kill, beat first, and then responded by mid. But already from the kill, Rabadi might actually press on this. And yeah, Kulal might have pressed the wrong button there as joining the team fight to save, but he goes down instead. All right, is that's he a win. Good time. Mint's gonna get one traded back, but that is the win here on the cap here for Rabadi. Still, there's here's Nico. Yeah, just gonna get staggered here, unfortunately. And Barrel is just trying to hard force this issue here without control of the point. They need to regroup. Starting to get worried for them that they were just going to end up throwing this map away off of, uh, or this round rather, off mm -hmm. of just some extended fights. But KSG down, down his Terra Surge. Got the kill onto Epic, but Rivadi don't really care about that. They do have the Primal Rage to delay here. If they can get up to like 80, this is a fantastic position for them. All that they need is Hofak to get a single pick. Here it is, Hofak. On top with the overclock. Finds no good target. Orisa will be the first. But the good field keeping him alive. Field. And Hofak. Did not really get much done from that. So Rage has to be popped. At the end, though, gets a Lucio. But he's more than that, John Minyeo. Awful Rage. KSG is still surviving in the middle. Even as he used the Pulse Bomb, Harutun gets the kill eventually. And the rest of Barrel still backs off. And this might actually going, yeah, going towards the final territory here at 92%. Yeah, it's gonna have to be a contest from somebody. No one really too super close here. Kyuki. Mm -hmm. Guess you back on Doomfist. Wants to touch. There's that overtime. Won't have to sustain as much as Orisa. Hope I can stay alive. There's a rush from Body. Onto back line of Barrel. Getting Hestian jumping knocked down from the pulse bomb. Kyuki is striking back. Body, do they have enough in the tank with the rest members? You can still give this flip because Veril still weighs away only 59%. Yeah, and now they have an awkward composition. They're running Tracer, Cassidy, Doomfist here. KSG not really in a position to swap, unfortunately. Just wants to try to build as fast as he can mm -hmm. that Meteor Strike so they can use it for the final defense here. Dummy Hux actually going to swap over to Risa. I do like this call quite a bit. Needs something a little bit sturdier to deal with this Doomfist. If he can hit him with a Javelin and just burst him down, that could be just the win itself. And trying to have that maximum counter. There's a window from Q-Loud early on. Nico did some damage backing off as that M Matrix was used quite early from Veril. Deadeye at the ready here for Nico defensively. They've got so many tools of KSG, especially can build that Meteor Strike. 92%, there's a slam from KSG. Going immediately back with the punch. Still do have it. This should be the final fight between the two. Meteor from Strike. Bestie, keeping everyone alive with the full back. Was a dangerous moment with the stun. Okay, Sound Barrier is out. Pushing Hopak. Yeah, there's a pressure on Hopak. Still alive, though. Going to parse light into Kyuki. Recalls, but immediately Nico will find him. And Harutun Paul does not get a kill. Nico finds two immediately afterwards. Mint getting one more. Barrel had an immense flip. And afterwards, it's going to be again a second point for them in Samoa and the control win. KSG diff, man. Again. He's getting it done, swaps the Doomfist, does a ton of work to actually get that point back, builds Meteor Strike, buys tie-in with it, pushes on to Harutun there. Harutun, you could see in that first-person view of him, he was like, oh, he's already used Meteor Strike, maybe I can maybe I can deal with him, maybe I can burst him down, they won't have a tank, we win the longer fight. And then, there's a, they forgot there was another soldier on the other side, it ends up bursting him down as well, or finishing him off, rather, as KSG was putting that pressure on, they end up winning the longer fight. I do think that Veril, Really messed up the middle of that second round, though. They were trickling in super hard. I think perhaps didn't quite realize the flip had con gone through. I mean, it, that sounds so bizarre to say for a team that's this experienced, but 
They almost gave mm. her body such an ult advantage that it would have been impossible to come back. They were able to clutch it out in the end with those swaps of the Doomfist and the Tracer, but did feel like they could have played that one a little bit slower, a little bit cleaner, maybe disrespecting oh, yeah. their opponents a little bit. Yeah, I think they didn't really expect Hopak to play that well, catching Kiki first and the second. And also there were some moments where uh, he was actually winning the duel against, against the Cassidy too. So without those moments, I think Barrel could have had a much cleaner of a second map, especially. And KSG just switching over to Doomfist. I like the response from Jumping Yuk, but the first Winston, the moments before that, Orisa, is, it's still a uh, it's for me. So what I don't want to see, which mm -hmm. we might see, is a lock-in <laughs> of Coliseum now and a substitution of Kotaro in and they play Wrecking Ball. Oh, uh, yes. Please don't do it to me, Rivadi. You have talented players who can actually play the meta picks right now. Bring us to, like, hybrid? You know, maybe Flashpoint? Mm -hmm. Run a, run a similar comp. If they want to play Winston on, on Coliseo or on Esperanza as well, I'm actually happy with that. That's where we see Winston most often is on push. But please don't Coliseo Wrecking Ball. I'm so scared we're Kataro in, <laughs> Wrecking Ball, Coliseo. Don't do it to me. We've seen it too many times. And I think Rivadi, it's a disservice to the DPS lineup for Rivadi that's so talented to mm -hmm. play a comp like that. But they might do it. Yes, uh, not just push. I think they might have Kotaro for Escort. Could be, yeah. Yeah, there are some escort maps where you can play that Wrecking Ball. And Kotaro's, uh, he's one of the better players at Wrecking Ball for sure, but sometimes it just doesn't work. Especially when you're fighting against Feral, you need to come out with something big. And John Minyuk, I think he really prepared with that Winston to actually dive into the DPS and maybe get some kills early on. With Hartoon and hold back from, uh, striking from the distance. Mm, zero. Uh, zero dives, and he was the only one diving in. Maybe with Hartoon a little bit. Uh, but more deal, uh, more damage has been done by Hopek alone in distance. So that yeah, Winston probably no. was probably one of the weakest. Yeah, well, I mean, it's tough to play into Cassidy, right? It burst you down, but mm. you guys probably know why I'm looking down. I got the incoming message. The next map? And the incoming message says, Kotaro in. <laughs> <laughs> and watch out. All right, Kotaro's so, playing Winston. No. <laughs> so the next thing that we're going to get is what map it's going to be. I'm stepping in. I'm going to play a better Winston. Please oh. no Coliseo Wrecking Ball. Please. Here's the here's the update for you guys. Qatar is coming in. Yes. You had you had the update of an update. So look. Just Prage. <laughs> Wrecking Ball on Rialto, mm -hmm. maybe. That would be more fun for me. I'd be I'd be down for that. Um you know, maybe Wrecking Ball on Hey, we had some Hollywood, old, probably old, not. old, like Route 66 Wrecking Ball days. We had some, we had some of that yeah. long time ago. Yeah, that's not on the pool, unfortunately, for him today, though. Um, <laughs> we'll find out shortly once we do have the update for you guys mm -hmm. where we are headed. Oh, also, no spoilers. Mihawk in. Oh, I oh Mihawk is in. Okay, yeah, Mihawk is in. So, are we going to like uh, Shambali? Maybe. Or Circuit? Possibly. Wait. But he is in for uh, Mint, so I don't think he will be playing Widowmaker, fortunately for you, G Clef. Yeah. He's just going to play, like, you know, Ana or something. Ah. Uh, or just, just end up playing. But Kulout, Kulout plays better Ana, though. We'll see what happens, though. We'll see what happens here as Mint goes out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think. Uh, I mean, they could swap it, they could do it. Or Veril might be thinking their own Winston this uh, this time. Could be. Mm -hmm. Chris is certainly a player who can play Winston. As with Kotaro, pretty good against against uh, the potential Wrecking Ball. And just because Kotaro's coming in doesn't necessarily mean they're playing Wrecking Ball. But it's like but 85%. It pretty much, but it though. pretty much means it's going to be playing <laughs> and Wrecking I, Ball. And I, I tried to say a lower number with the 85%. <laughs> So, I kind of meant like 95%. Yeah, he basically meant like 102%. Um, <laughs> so we have two players in mm -hmm. OWCS Japan who really like Wrecking Ball. It's Bellaboo and Oh, Junker, Junker Town. Town out of all. But yeah, it's Bellaboo and it's Kataro, right? And Junker Town, probably not my favorite place to see a Wrecking Ball come through. After A, can be quite strong, but on A itself, it's really easy to focus the Wrecking Ball down because it's a very open um, portion of the map. We'll see what uh, ends up... That's why we have Mihawk. Yeah. So we'll see what ends up happening. Be Widow for the yeah. first, uh, first section. As this is a Widow map, this map, and right now, um, 
the uh why am i blanking on this one oh it's out of the pool that's why um anyway we're jumping in the map i'll i'll, I'll talk about it as we get into it i don't want to go on this ramp right now all right junker town for the first time of the season let's see what the comp is all about barrel leading the series with a one zero And what I was going to say is Casino Royale, um, or Circuit Royale, rather, not Casino Royale. That's like a James Bond movie. That's like, movie. yeah, double, double 007. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Which Circuit is a great Royale. movie, by the way. Circuit Royale is the other map I was thinking of. So, anyways, <laughs> B-Hawk is going to play Ilari. Mm -hmm. So, he's he's set to support. Hofak is on Widow. They want to rely on Hofak. So, Katara is showing the Wrecking Ball for now, and he can create some disruption here. And they have Zenyatta, Widowmaker, here. So, there are ways to actually chip away at this shield comp here for Varel, because they're running the Sigma. But it is very tough oh, to man. execute. Junker Town out of all. And Hofak on Widowmaker. He has a huge opportunity be because Nico was playing the Casty to just mm -hmm. simply outrange him. Same with the Alari. And Kotaro can buy so much attention in the front by playing that playing that ball. So Vero pushing themselves towards the back with the Sigma. Yes, she's certainly a great player on that hero. And no one near that top line of sight. Dangerous movement for Nico. Every single pop-up, you know, you have to wait for that cooldown to come back. That's time bought for Barrel, as they can't really do anything unless they get a pick. As you can see here, Kuki just harassing the Zenyatta as they slowly push forward. Yeah, there's some pressure onto the members of Barrel as they're spread up, spread apart. There's also the Discord from Epic. They're trying to snipe, but no shots coming through. Blinks away. Some extra shots from Epic, though. That's a Tracer dead, which means Hunter Tune. Has extra space on the back to pressure onto Q Loud and Mihawk. Artun also getting chunked out here. Mm -hmm. But Ilari also does damage. Epic. Really nice angle here for him. As Hofax getting pushed away, he needs to be so careful. Immortality already gone. Hmm, that's a pretty nice kill as these two teams kind of rotated away on the opposite side. But there's finally Kotaro on that payload for the push. But KSG has been just sitting duck. And Hofak's not offering anything here, and unfortunately his tank is just pushed out by Mihawk there, so Kataro now down. He's gonna put yeah, a stop to this push. They're all the way on the back, but they just cannot get close to this payload. And they're actually going towards Veril's <laughs> Yeah, they're on the wrong side of the map, <laughs> and that means they're gonna get pushed out. But eventually with the respawn distance, uh, Rivadi should have the advantage. This is so wild, okay. Hofak. Let's but no one's pick. catching KSG as he's putting a delay onto this as Kyuki just snipes Hofak who had finally had it zoomed up. Yeah, this is really awkward for Rivadi now as they're completely split. Harutun's chunked down. I don't think he has recall. I believe he used it. Okay, it does recall up. This is the Wild West. Yeah, this is the Wild West. <laughs> now Nico's gonna get back his space here, has Deadeye, has Kyuki. Oh, yeah, Kotaro was stuck there. Nice catch. All right, Rivadi need to really hunker down and regroup. This is their map pick and they are looking so lost. As the Infrasight is ready here for Hofak, and that should give him an angle. Oh, what a shot, but uh, to be honest, shot. Wolf, this looks like a solo queue to me. Yeah, this does look like <laughs> a little solo, bit solo queue. <laughs> Hofak is going to drop Infrasight after he's at half health. Oh, the Sigma, who has been uh, the delaying tool for a barrel. Dead Eye catching out of tune, that's one. Still got three more ultimates from Barrel. Lux up, and the Matrix kisses alive that he barely had 10 HP left. Field has to be down from Hesti. Good Looking immortality at Matrix. field. But Hesti himself was out of the field. Some exchanges, some dirty fights are all around the payload. I mean, not around, not around the payload. No one's actually nearby. And what's happening? It's hard to it's hard to even say this, but like this has been a more one-sided map than the last one. I love this swap from Nico onto the Sombra as mm -hmm. well. That's just going to guarantee them one big EMP fight to actually close the map out as long as he can build that charge up. And he should be able to, realistically. It's also great into the Wrecking Ball. Minefield, very low value on A of Junkertown. This is what I was talking about earlier. Wrecking Ball, pretty bad here in general because you if you go into the chokes, you're actually vulnerable. If you're out in the open, you're also vulnerable. As oh, Hacked was looking for that Minefield. And see where the Minefield drops all the way off to the corner. And that's because of the hat. Nice call, Nico there. There's no for the Sombra play. QQ, Harutun. And Tracer Duel, kind of entertaining in the middle, but without Kotaro, they just cannot get further push. Some damage into KSG, but needs to find the kill. As we're talking 11 seconds now, Transcendence popped even. They really need to get this push. Okay, Hofak, Hofak does get the kill on KSG. All this time, they were looking for a Sigma kill. They do get it. 
Can he get more? There's Mihawk with the response. Epic dead. Okay, they need to Your take body, out to push. Hartoon. On yeah. that payload, finally, with Hofak. They need to regroup here. Here comes the Doomfist. Quick block after the punch. Can you slam? Okay, there's an extra, but exchange, which means it's slightly better for the body, but Nika finds one more. Getting close to the checkpoint, less than three meters. Can anyone touch from Beryl? Cloud's gonna get on it here. That EMP not ready, dies at 96. Should be the cap. You have to imagine. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say, like, they do end up getting the cap there, and this, we do have a pause, but like, Nico, he if he actually gets that EMP, they 100% lose the fight and lose the game. But Kotaro, man, I, this play from Ravadi is mm -hmm. just so disjointed. And they are able to in this cast, and we'll see what happens with the pause once we get the update on that. Hopefully it's not going to be anything crazy that affects the, the game itself. Hopefully it's just a, a you know tech issue. But anyway, the, the gameplay that we saw from Ravadi there was super disjointed. And I think that when you're playing Widowmaker on this map, you need to play around every single pop-up headshot mm -hmm. opportunity and every single play that, that you where you're calling, I'm going for the pick, that's when Kotaro needs to go. And that's when you need to create that disruption so that you can actually look for those headshots. Instead, we had Kotaro off on his solo queue adventure over on the side there. He gets in, burst down so many times while Hofak is basically just playing on his own by himself. Then that one time where they got split and had to push back to the enemy's spawn, was just, it wasted like a whole minute of their time bank. Um, so really awkward here. And I think so much frustration you could feel on the side of Ravadi here as you guys can see that we do have a network issue. Yeah, ping issue. Sometimes there can be ping spike, but of course they are playing on the Jap 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 Japanese server. All the Japanese players are playing Japanese servers. So it shouldn't be too much of a worry. Yeah, I mean, it could be some of our Korean uh, imports who are having ping issues, but probably not. I mean, the the lag between Japan and Korea is actually very, very low. Yeah, it's, it's basically like less than 30 yeah. MS, so it's actually basically none. Yeah, so it's, it's not going to be a big issue there. So probably just something going on with somebody's internet, but mm. for the sake of making sure everyone has the best conditions to play, we'll be investigating that and making sure that uh, that does get resolved. Yeah, Key here is Ravadi gets the cap, yes, right? Yes, they did. And EMP is is going to be ready for the next fight, so they should be able to very quickly regain control. I imagine that we'll see a match of the Widow here as we move into B, if it's going to be stayed there for Hofak. And we are on pausing. Going back into game with the extended timer onto Ravadi. But the biggest keep here will be Kotaro staying on that ball. Yeah. And this I is imagine where he will not change. The ball actually gets a little bit easier to play out here because there's a lot more agency for you to contest high ground. Mm -hmm. Going to be tough into this EMP this next fight as we're going to see it drop from high ground here and a big collapse from barrel as it drops down. Yeah, some more hooking spots. Let's see where Nico wants to go. Okay, this is the reverse one. Yeah, the Tracer Sopra, the snipe duo. Which Vero is known for. He has the EMP. Yeah. Well, well, that actually got nothing done. Nothing. That was not it. That doesn't seem like where you want to EMP. Yeah, nor would you want to EMP the support line. In okay, this fight. They, okay, it seems like they just wanted to change. Well, that was, uh, that's going to be a free push to V here, as they will swap over to Cassidy. KSG going to go on to the D.Va for a last minute desperate contest here, and they will have, of course, Yeah, free push. Pulse. Um, one drop down here for the contest. A Matrix from Hesty. And you go back with the Cassidy. What's the contest? But the damage already better damage done from Katara and Hofak. Something is just not right here. G Club Barrel is not playing very well here. That was a very weak defense. Perhaps they just haven't really practiced this map that much. And this is the new map pool coming into effect. Because Ravadi, obviously on A, they had Hofak on the Widowmaker. He's fantastic at this pick. And, you know, that worked out very well for them. They ended up winning that scrappy fight to get A, but then the EMP cost them B, and now they're running D.Va here, which can be great for low ground, high ground contest, and backline access mm -hmm. onto the Zenyatta, but Rivadi now with a massive ult advantage here, and what looked like a potential full hold is now a pretty good timing here for Rivadi to potentially finish this map. Yes, with Nico Kiki. And KSG now being on D.Va. Let's see what they can, they can get done. As, as from D.Va, you can get so much he lead it off the map. There's a minefield first, Kotaro. Pretty good one. Doing some damage from all the way top. Pilat will be called up back with that Cassidy. Has been on a snipe duty. Some more headshots coming through. In the meantime, Kotaro gets one more. The second with the mine. Mine is just not being cleaned up. 
Yeah. And Barrel just not responding, respecting what Rivadi can do on this map. I also think the D.Va is pretty weak into this composition of Rivadi. It doesn't offer you really much against the Wrecking Ball at all. Not gonna offer you anything into Cassidy unless you have a coordinated follow-up die of Harutun here on the Pulse. And we'll just get the Immortality Field, but where's the Contest? There's a Deadeye from Hofak. All the way up top, so Vero can't come out and contest. 1.99, less than two meters out. Everybody, they almost had this. The map gone, and two members th 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 third. And this one's going in, that's a three point. No from Rivadi. From KSP wow. for the contest. And that was a great play from Hofak there, knowing the fight was lost for Veril. Went onto the high ground with the cast. He drops the Deadeye, so a contest is just not likely for anyone but the D.Va who doesn't have self-destruct. And they may have identified that. Either way, they could have forced out the self-destruct early and then killed him in pilot form, so he could not remake. Would have been a massive win for them this moment here. Plus, look at Kataro blocking them from coming out of the spawn here on the Wrecking Ball. It's just a free fire fish in the barrel there for Hofak. And Rivadi, rough start on A. That one was not it, but from the B failed EMP from Nico that gave him a free push into C with a D.Va mm -hmm. attempt was very lackluster. That's my favorite bar in Junker Town. Yeah, your woods. That's where I go. It's my pub. It's my, what do they call it? It's my local. That's what people say these days. <laughs> and that's crazy. Having a pl one minute plus time back after having no time touching that first point. Great job of observers. Love so, it. <laughs> on defense, this Wrecking Ball is much easier to pilot mm. for um, Rivani because Barrel is coming out of spawn. You can try to threaten them backline access, threaten the backline access with the the Wrecking Ball. Hofax is going to have line of sight advantage. He's going to have high ground advantage. He doesn't have to rely on pop ups with his grappling hook. He can just free fire, then use his grappling hook for repositioning. And we'll see if Nico wants to match this or if he's just going to stick with the casting because he of course will be outranged. Mm -hmm. And there's also Mihawk, the Widow player on the team. Yeah. But he is locked to support for now, so won't be able to do it here on Junker Town. Oh, yes. As Nico Kuki staying Tracer Cassidy. Here's a push. As this Widow, Hofak needs to register the kills. Or this can be a very fast push. Katara waiting here. I like this slow play on the Wrecking Ball. Checking the comp, no Sombra, so he should be feeling okay to go around. Yeah, the Brig could be a problem for him, but should be able to, if he plays it well, avoid that. Here's the potential snipe from Kuki. On to that Widow. Taro traded. With the grenade, Nico finds one more. Uh, but the payload is still pushing. No big t team fight. Barrel is getting the mission done. Cloud and we might killing. just hit that one point. Yeah, cloud killing Hofak there, definitely not ideal as well. And that is just going to be the push. That's the contest for 0.25 seconds, or 0.25 meters. But yeah. once he steps out, that is touch. Yeah, it might be 2.5 seconds of time he buys, but that's going to be about it. Five minutes, the time bank here for Veril, a much stronger A push for them. And I don't think this time they're going to all in on an EMP play and lose full control here. Rivadi should be willing to give up the entrance way here and just back off and play four point contest with the high ground. That's exactly what they do. A lot of teams make the mistake to actually try to control the choke here with Widow and end up losing a lot of ground. Playing back as Rivadi are now is much wiser. It will allow you a little bit more of a safe contest. It's Hesty playing with fire here. I, as I do say, they're playing safe. He is not. Yeah, back on Diva. Yeah. Sigma just for the first point push and now uh, Rebadi no changes whatsoever still keeping that widow let's see how the duo goes down as the only tech near that payload everyone else is on the high ground trying to have those 1v1 some snipes or the lucky headshots diva much better than uh okay oh. bomb. that's epic down the diva much better into the widow than the cassidy nico finds one more i'll return down now they're all after just scattered apart around the map. They will win that individual duels. And now Diva's on <laughs> off the leash, but before that, it seemed like Vero was Vero also didn't really have a perfect plan for that. Yeah, Diva a really good option here. And perhaps they just didn't expect the Cassidy swap from Hofak last time is why they're running it, as we're just gonna see a slight contest here, but there's no realistic way to stop this cap. 515 remains the time bank, but 
uh, Casty can actually defend itself relatively well against Diva. can roll away, can do a ton of damage back, and then the team can turn onto the Diva. But the Widow is just not going to have a chance, as we saw in that last fight, especially with the front to back that we did see. Katara does have Minefield here. Could see if they want to try to control that choke, but it's a bit late for it now, as Infrasight does get popped. Looking for the Cassidy. Yeah, but rolls away. Knows that Infrasight is on, and they still control the payload and push. And so fact might be switching into a different hero, but Epic finds one. Could keep dead. That's a revenge from the ball spot before. Here's KSG with not taking too much damage as he's going back and forth. There's a Matrix to delete some of those projectiles coming in. Now Harutun looking for the push. Uh, there's a self-destruct. Catching no one though. Everyone on top. Ways away from that destruct. Immortality field, let him remake. Minefield. Minefield on top, catching Nico. That's a good start for her body to buy some time, but still, this payload is pushing with KSG. He's discorded. Will get staggered here. They should not kill him instantly. Okay, they will. And there's a kick. Probably could have uh, slowed that one down a little bit, but either way, he's going to now get the respawn up. And then Varro here. After now, push around this corner, and Hofak does have full line of sight now. Winning that fight is really critical for Ravadi to be able to maintain that advantage for the Widowmaker. Otherwise, can just get bowled over by the Diva, getting on top of him within the follow-up from the Casty. Kyuki does have Pulse. He's just looking for backline access, maybe even a Pulse on the Kotaro to finish him off. Mm -hmm. There's a second line. Still having that Widow. Let's see. don't think we've seen a, a, a kill feed happening from Hofak directly. False bomb. Gone, but still got three more. Nico would love to have that zoning push. Might be looking for that final moment before the payload goes in for the third point. They're really burning this clock down mm -hmm. significantly right now. Our Rivadi. Taro coming all the way top. Look for a kill. Nico is looking for a flank play here with his dead eye. This could be huge if he's unscouted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Spots the widow. Super greedy, but it might pay off. Yeah, with already two members dead, and that's only Kotaro left with Harutun off somewhere. It's so funny how he went around for that, and the whole team dies without yeah, his help. Yeah, the team actually won. And no one else is on the point. There's a touch. And it's some contest. Transcendence has to be popped off, but waiting for the members to come from Rivadi. If Matrix has so much to stay with the field, no one's gonna go down nearby. And Barrel, it seems like they're about to grab the start point with a lot more time. Deadeye here for the secure. That's going to be it. Two minutes and 20 nearly here on the clock. So a whole extra minute. And the other concern here, G Clef, is both of the A pushes were drastically different. Urvati finishing theirs in overtime. Barrel finishing with 515. We have to see a drastically, and I mean very drastically, different and stronger and more coordinated um, push here for Rivadi this time around on A because last time they got completely split. You only have a minute and three seconds this time around, and you're not going to be graced with Veril messing up one team fight to get you through mm -hmm. very likely. So I think they're going to stick with the same comp. It's going to be the Wrecking Ball Widow. Veril, we'll see what they want to do. I would not mind Veril running their own Widow as playing the Cassidy does handicap you quite significantly in terms of range, but they trust Nico. And he is going to be, he's not going to be able to do much against Hofak, but he does a lot more against Wrecking Ball than Widow can. So I think mm -hmm. that's the reasoning for why they're running this comp. Also, Mihawk offering so much extra damage on this Alaria. They expected the Wrecking Ball. They know Kotaro's getting subbed in. They're going to see Wrecking Ball. They know on the second defense, they're not going to change it up. Love the Alari pick here. Focusing Kotaro down and just keeping Nico safe from Hofak's LOS is the game plan here for Vero. They really only need to win one team fight basically in order to stop this cap from going through yes i think one of the one of the key points nico not going on that sombra yeah he's gonna stick with the casty this time no no swap to that this time around mm -hmm. at least for now we're having is uh, issues with the uh, api at the moment but the game there is no problem for the players to actually play the game as we do have barrel for the defense here's their body whole fact Needs to register and provide some reason why he's picking this hero. He's very good at it, but needs to find LOS. We'll need to look for a pop up, probably. He's oh, playing this on time high KSG's ground. being pressured. Uh, did not end up being a kill again, but that was enough pressure for the payload to push about halfway. Pylon gone. 
Kofag pushed away here. We'll need to grapple defensively likely here. Good angle. Nothing though. Yeah, no one's in sight for him. 15 seconds to go. Ravadi need to start getting kills here or they're just gonna get pushed off of the point. Yeah, that's right. There's no time. As 10 seconds. There's a drive from Kotaro. Arkin for the help for extra damage, but no one. As they basically drew a rot line right next to the payload vertically. And no one can actually push further as Kyuki. We went off from Harutun, winning that 1v1. Nico finds one, Hofek dead. 4v4 near the payload. If Kotaro dies, that's the end of this push. And down he goes. Yes, Nico just winning this closer quarter combat. Harutun looking for some pulse available, but just gonna register it now, but he go, ends up going down. No pulse bomb. And that is it with overtime. 53 meters. Feral in prime position to close this one out. I would love to see, again, like I said, something like the Widow from Nico or just a change up of composition. They may end up running the Sombra here again just to shut the Wrecking Ball down. You could do the one EMP push because you have an extra uh, minute of time here. That's the, what you can afford is to just go for an ult push to close this map out. And the coordination for Ravadi hasn't been good enough to deal with Sombra. We don't really have any anti-Sombra tech in here for Ravadi, and you know that if you run this Sombra as Nico versus Epic's Zenyatta, you should be able to outpace the Transcendence build mm -hmm. and end up getting the EMP first. But they're just going to stick with, at least for now, this Cassidy comp. Try to use the shielding here of KSG's Sigma to push through any Widow defenses. It isn't going to be Widowmaker, though, for Ravadi. Hofak is going to match the Cassidy here. And to be honest, I'd almost rather see him on either Widow or Sojourn here. Because I think the Cassidy is going to be so easy to bowl over. And they could obviously swap composition if they think they have a better answer to it once they scout him. And that's that extra minute of time that Veril has here. I want to see a really, really concerted effort to make sure Hofak does not go down. Hesti has a tough job ahead of him. If Kotaro dies or Hofak dies, Barrel yes. probably just win yeah. right away. Sigma covers for Cassidy, and there's no cover for Hofak. Just has to have perfect defense or cover from the support, Hesti and Epic. We'll Epic's see how this goes. Yeah, Epic got a few picks on their attack. If mm -hmm. he can find something like that too, that would be massive, but can't predict that at this moment in time. Your slow push and Mihawk's, Mihawk's point of view here. He's looking for that one snipe. One kill is all they need. Tiki with the blinks. Oh, back off to the side, taking some damage from Sigma. But this payload on a push. And you can see the mark right there. All they need to push is 10 plus meters. KSG so that, just so much sturdier here than Katara right now. Someone has to touch or else this is this is just going to push. There's a dive, but Nico going down. Hofak finds a kill early on. That should buy them good about a minute or so. With the field from Hesti. Everyone's staying alive. Baron need to regroup. Good heals from Cloud coming through, though. And they're actually surviving here. KSG. They the can't lose more. Hartoon's looking for more. Trying to buy time. It was very close. Less than three meters there with the push. Oh, there's a KSG's push. KSG's pushing. Needs to, yeah, keeps on. You need to catch, but the tank is just away from payload. And Kotaro gets the field out. It's actually Tracer on the payload most of the time. And KSG is stuck to the payload, not moving an inch. Okay, they have minefield. Ravadi could do this. Less than 50 seconds. Matrix up on top. He's so low. Harutun gone. Kotari, hasty. There's a transcendence, but already losing three members. Might be too late. Harutun. Where is he? It has to be away, and that will be it. Transcendence just a little bit too late there to stop the, the bleeding. And, you know, the Sigma on the point, KSG, was just unkillable, it seemed. And Harutun was trying his best. He kept blinking his way in there, recalling. Then he's like, all right, I need Kataro to stand on the point for a second, get that shield up, and then run away. Okay, my recall's back up. I'm going to touch. But they never were able to really actually start winning a fight there. And if the Transcendence actually comes up faster, mm -hmm. then they end up getting full health on the Wrecking Ball on the point. And then, of course, when the Tracer comes back in, they have a realistic contest. I was a little bit worried for Veril there because they did end up kind of splitting themselves up and continue to try to force those fights. Scrappy play here in OWCS Japan, as we often see. But they were able to get it done in the end. KSG, definitely the leading front runner for me right now for player of the match. Yep, yeah, that is it. 2-0 lead for Veril, of course. That was 
<laughs> Not the perfect match for Barrel as the, they were pretty much surprised by the Junker, uh, the Junker Town pick of the map. Let's see where we are heading into on the third map. But before we go into that, we'll take a short break when we, once we come back. Map number three.
Welcome back everyone to the second match as we do have Barrel winning big time 2-0. There was a bit of a hiccup from that yeah, previous match. A, little... a big hiccup that did not stop for a long time. <laughs> yeah, definitely a little bit of a shaky second map from them, but um, they did get it done in the end. I think surprised by the pick, the map pick that is to say, and then uh, didn't expect Hofak to swap off to the Cassidy, so we're running the D.Va and struggled there, but did end up having a really nice uh, end to the map. Good defense into a nice push there. Um, KSG looking very good. Bit of a tank dip. That's what I expected going into this series. Has come true. Kotaro mm. trying to force the Wrecking Ball. John Mihawk playing Winston into Cassidy. We will have Mihawk out and Mint back in. And then on the other side, we will, of course, have John Mihawk back in as well as Kotaro out. So there's a few things it could mean. They could just be trying to run back to playing you know, something a little bit similar to control and, and take us to Flashpoint, or could be Winston on push, which I think is probably the best place to play Winston, if that's what John Mayock wants to do. Kind of a weird meta read here or from the body. Or a hybrid, you can start off with the Winston and then switch off to some other tanks. I think yeah. there are some maps that we can think about from Numbani hybrid. Numbani yeah. feels like a good map to play that. Or Hollywood. And yeah. some you have some extra room to hide yourself. You don't really have to take that much damage like Samoa's open map and that beach was just not the map for Winston. But there are a lot more for hybrid and I think we're about to see that map coming up real soon. And the third map, okay, so flash, flash point. point. Great guess. So this I don't want to see Winston. Um, <laughs> <coughs> it's better, it's better than um Samoa, but it is not that much better than Samoa. Oh god, honest. I almost killed myself there. Oh, I'm alive. I'm, I'm sorry, G Club. Oh. I didn't mean to take you out there. No, I do. I fully agree. That's why I almost choked myself. And uh, as oh uh, yeah, would love to see a lot more Sigmas though. Maybe uh, so maybe some more map for Orisa certainly. Ramatra even I think is a better pick than Winston. If we really have to talk about Winston here again, uh, John Minok certainly a player who can play a variety of heroes, not just Winston. It was, it was just that uh, Samoa, the map, was just not, work, not really working for him. As you get things ready for this Flashpoint, map number three. Let's see if Vero finishes off with a 3-0 or Rebody striking back. Ooh, Orisa. Ooh. That's uh, meta. That's strong. That's uh, normal. I like mada, it. Mada Mada Hanto. Wait, Mada Mada, yes. So Symmetra. <laughs> Sojourn Tracer versus Cassidy Tracer, it looks like here. Yeah, just for the teleport. And then we'll see what, he's, what we switch into. Tracers? Yeah. No echoes here in Japan so far. As we will see who gets point position first. KSG has been the stronger of these two players on Orisa. Yep, love the Orisa. Hofax certainly on the, on the best tier, I would say. Sojourn, oh, there's a kill already on Kuki. Immediate pick, as we will usually we kind of do have this merry-go-round on this first map, but that won't be happening. Yeah, just gets that stray shot on the tracer. Charged up railgun will one shot her, so no counterplay there for Harutun, or rather for Kyuki. Hofak with a really good shot there, and actually will win them the point just by default. And I appreciate that Barrel don't try to hard force this time around, mm -hmm. although it's been a, a losing battle. Yeah, I think Barrel was. Kind of surprised for the second map. Uh, they are gathering themselves up here. KSG, that's a tank win already. And Opax strikes back again. again? Second death from Kyuki. And second shot in a row on the head. And even Nico, okay, trying to have some revenge. Oh, possibly on Opax, but that was almost a trade. There's way more healing coming into Nico there with the kill there on to Epic. There's not much that Rivadi could offer back. Hesti is not going to be able to match that healing to keep Hofak alive there as Nico gets healed up to full. And now he's going to control this choke point. I guess you will eat a javelin, but I don't think he cares too much about it. And Barrel now have the opportunity to swing this first round back into their favor. Do have a Katsune rush coming up here faster than Epics. Could just use it to push before Rivadi get to the point itself. Could even just push onto Hofak, as we've seen KSG love to push okay. on the Sojourns with this Orisa pick. Yeah, Rivadi, a bit of a rotation here, as you can see, for his towards the side, even going further, really forcing Vero to rotate together with them. And maybe force them off. Here's KSG though, forcing them off, and Opec just caught in that stun. Can't go anywhere else, that's a snipe for him. Arthur with the pulse, catching anyone, not enough to change the tide of how this is going. SC gone, Jamin Yuck's the next to follow. And I gotta say, G-Club, 
it happened exactly like I thought it would. <laughs> Just a toss out of clouds. Katsune rush. KSG, who's he pushing? He's pushing Hofag. Mm -hmm. Javelin, headshots, dead Sojourn, dead Ravati. And that's going to be the cap off the second team fight win in a row for Veril. They did it with just one ultimate. And they actually have the faster track here to the point as well. So KSG, once he gets on it, will be able to use his ultimate first. No, Jomi can match. And they will have a sound bear, hopefully, for Ravati here. Hesti should be able to build that up. Yeah, we'll see if Veril can push anyone in the rotation. It does seem like Ravati actually wants to take more time and rotate. KSG diving in. There's a target. And does get Hofak down. Knows exactly which player to pin down on Kyuki. I think KSG's read on Arisa is just so good. He knows that with the armor that Arisa has, he can just, with speed boost, drop onto the DPS backline and burst them down. His accuracy is good enough. He has great javelin accuracy mm -hmm. as well. He's just the type of player who, if he gets into that backline, he's going to get success. And they're just not reacting to him quickly enough as now first cap goes over. Doesn't have to use his ultimate. Harutun just now respawning. And yes, there's no uh, Sojourn here for Veril, so they're at a range disadvantage. But Nico is doing so much damage to Jumping Hyuk. And when the enemy Sojourn keeps dying to KSG, it doesn't necessarily matter. Yeah, look, Jumping Hyuk, whenever he steps in, he's about half HP. And even with that, he's taking full heal from the back. And with about five ultimates ready to go. Ravadi trying to match. We'll see how this goes. There's the Kasuna Mirage first from Epic. Oh, Nico's Deadeye is gone. Immediately popped and gone. Veril needs to get the placement back as Ravadi finds himself off to the side. The beat from mid, only catching three. Both bosses out wide. I mean, up very low. Back finds one. But Yuki Nico does the better of a trade. And Opak has to slide away from the fight. And this is still not lives. He's still alive! Where? He didn't die! <laughs> He's at like 50 health! He's less than 50 health that whole time! And that was just poor target selection from Ravati. They put everything into KSG, Nico and Kyuki free firing, and uh, as support ultimates are traded, Jumin Hyuk looked like he got the better of the tank war, but Nico doing so much work in the back line. That should have been a win for Ravati, but the target selection was so poor, and KSG got healed up there in the final moments and will survive. Let's yeah, see what they could do with the first cap here. Potentially here, Ravati, they are on their last legs here in this first match of seeding. Yes, this flashpoint can be the match for Veril. They take the third, taking the high ground slowly for Veril as the point unlocks now. Ravati, Jaminia, Ono Risa certainly having a better time sustaining them. As giving some more extra time for Hopeback. Nico, the same duel. Very close, both very low. Well, with the help of the teammates, we'll be back on feet. Bit of a rotation from Hofak. Let's see, let's see if that finds anyone else. Cassidy off to the side. Dead are ready. And Hartun will be going down against Kyuki first. And the rest? Feral, do they want to push more? Kyuki does have to recall. Mm -hmm. Is the pulse bomb gone? As Hofak goes down, KSG finds another. Yes, uh, Veril is having a better focus. Each target wants it one by one. And, and they already got the cap. They already got the cap. I mean, this is there's no room to work with here. Epic's Katsune Rush completely worthless here in this fight. Hesti is going to have Sound Bear, but they can match it. Plus, they have the faster uh, Terra Surge. So, back cap. <laughs> I mean, you might be able to find a Pulse Bomb angle here potentially, but let's see. There's a rush in the beat. Her body from response. Trying to get a kill onto Nico, but everyone alive, and there's a Terra Surge to keep everyone alive from KSG. What a cover there! Nico finds one more on Hofak, and Harutun is there for the touch, but didn't really do too much on the team fight. It is one versus five here. What can he do? As Q Loud is just standing still, taking damage, and that will be the final kill coming through. Barrel taking a 3 0 victory on Flashpoint and the match. Yep, 3 0 Flashpoint, 3 0 series, as you say. And they will be the first winners here in our seeding tournament. So, Barrel, our top team, only dropping a single map this tournament so far, will not drop a single map in their first match of seeding. This is the expected result, to be honest with you guys watching at home, but. I thought the only time we really saw Ravani put up a fight was on Junkertown, and then 
Still couldn't win that one. This one was a complete wash, and the attempted match there from Hofak on the Casty was a good idea, but he was he swapped because he was like, I need to do damage to KSG. He's getting mm -hmm. all the resources. I want to burst down that Arisa, whereas his opposition, um, Kyuki, was just like, no, I'm going to kill the DPS lineup. I'm going to flank. Oh. I'm going to find all access to anyone I want to kill. I don't need to end up killing my opponent's tank because the opponent's tank, like Chum and Yuck, he is he's actually getting worked by my tank. Like I don't need to even help out in the Arisa War. So he was doing more relevant damage, and the target selection seemed a little bit off, unfortunately, for Ravadi on that final map. Yeah, even though Hofag was popping off, imagine if Hofag wasn't able to get those early kills on Kuki, this flashpoint would have been over minutes ago. But even with that, they were still not really... But even, well, with that, Beryl, respecting their opponent, backed off, went in for the regroup, and then immediately taking it back. I mean, they just had better ult economy all the time. The management was just uh, on point. Nirvati, of course, there were moments where, okay, four ults, let's press all of it, and let's try to deal against Vero, but it was just not enough. It seemed like what we had was just a straight up one versus, first place versus fourth place. Yeah, and that's what we saw. And, you know, you had a DPS lineup that was outclassing enemy DPS lineup, but then as um, Hofak, who's my goat, you know, you guys know I love Hofak, and especially as Sojourn, but he kept getting killed by KSG, like, over and over again, which is what happened in the regular mm. season game as well, where... KSG is just like, I'm Arisa, I'm walking towards you with a speed boost, I'm going to javelin you and headshot you, and you're not going to be able to offer any damage back. And he just kept killing him too, this entire series. Yes, and on the opposite, John Minyeo couldn't do the same amount of work, so that's KSG, uh, just top tier from Japan, ready to go, and I think he's about to get that POTM okay? And we do have that ready for you, let's see who the player of the match is. From Barrel, he's going to be... KSG! Unsurprising. Indeed. Watch how many times in this highlight clip that he ends up killing Hofag. Kills Haratun, I'll push Hofag. Watch this. Bye-bye. Doesn't even That's need one in this highlight clip. Let's see how many times he does it in this clip. All right, this is, this is not a Hofag push. Yeah, but he just nails in. This oh, time, Epic gets killed. I remember this one. This time, well, the D.Va, the D.Va was not our favorite part of KSG's game. Yeah. <laughs> this, this one. Uh, but against the uh, Widowmaker was obviously much better than the Cassidy. Trying to snipe Hofak on the high ground there. Turns around, takes out the other DPS. Yes, these are the moments. Hofak, bye-bye. Just finding this much opening as a tank. Yeah. Outclassing so much. And his DPS just don't need help from the support, so KSG can just take all the healing. And big Terra Surge here, forces the sound barrier. Another push on the Hofag. Yeah. So three in this clip so far. Maybe and, four. And after the beat, <laughs> when the barrier is gone, there's a Terra Surge. That was sick Terra Surge. Yeah, that immediately one was clean. after. And look, KSG has only picked up three POTMs because Veril is such a, a team that has so many strong players, right? QK has actually matched him at three as well. Mm -hmm. That's only if there's of their six wins or now nine wins. Um, six of them here, you can see a lot of the other players have picked up some as well. Cloud has two, and uh, I'm not sure who has that last one for them, but they've spread the POTMs out, whereas you see a lot of the other players on these teams actually have only uh, one representative. Yeah, which means that they have balance in the team. It's not just the one solo player or two players are shining all the time. They're going back and forth, uh, taking the POTM, which just... And this is a team that has been together for a long, long time. You can see the teamwork and one person just popping off every day. But that was the second match of the night. We still do have one more match coming up next. This should be the big one. A lot more fire day there. Somnia versus Six Blood. We will be back after a break, but don't miss our final match of the night.
時もあれば後ろを見てる時もあるので相当前のプレッシャーが強いさあ手前分断ですねこの構成だとサポートが飛んでいくことはできないのであああここでビリアックされましたねコタロの前に残っていた一つに触れてしまったコタロああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああさあただここでオーバークロックさあオーバークロックを抜いたホーファックここに対してワイドットがアルティメントを抱えている状況でありますがさあオーバークロックを抜いたホーファックが暴れましたーオーバックがあまりにもフリーでいるすぎるいやーこれはやりたい放題ーさんからのラッシュみたいなのをやってるとは思うニコキャスリーなんだこれはいや,いやこれはギリギリまだやられます,ます、ね、蘇生入剣ですさあこの間にワンキルもぎ取っていきましたヒラリーを落としましたそしてかなり最前線で控えていますアニちゃんに対しては風切りでしっかりと捉えていきましたさすがのハイテーラウイウェですね1人で3キルおお追加のキルまで生まれています素晴らしい忍者お止まりやすいですからね、はい、さあ竜拳に対しては一度3を食らいながらもあっちょっとこれは龍の中龍の中でした龍の中に入っていました龍剣で龍同士引かれ合ったんでしょうかそしてここからシーツ上げてきた上げてきた3人抜きえ生かして、えー、まずはフォグにプレッシャーをかけてからと思うんですけどもうーんフックーオーバーショックおっ引っ張ったーモークリー形を整えていきますただナノブーストプレッシャーはあまり機能せず逆に空気がキルを落としたねさあ前のめり前のめりにいきますいやーこのドゥンフィストコピーはかなり刺されるさあこのダブルタンクシステムマウガのドゥームフィストも襲いかかってくるこれは悪夢以外の何もなんないしかしどうだいやこれは溶かしきる逆に切りましたね誘い込んだかむしろこのダブルキル一気にセカンドクリアいや素晴らしい立ち回り、はい、さあしかし正面の当たり合いではバレルの方がダメージ上回っていますそしてクラウドまたクラウドあれもうクラウドのキルで今のところ全て止まってますよクラウドクラウド,クラウドと重ねていきましたバレルチームキルそして左からこんにちはーシーズンです苦しいですねまだパンティアルメットほとんど誘導できてないのできたー上からあーこれはいいキャプティブさん入った夜明けの光に続きましたさあ,さあそして残党狩りもお手の物これは完全にクラウドゲーミングですね間違いない今,バレルは今のところプレイオーザーマッチです苦しい状況をこじ開けたのはワイドッツのデスブロスムいやただですね今これリスポンが圧倒的にレバティ側に近いんですよアライズ側は人数をかけているのでなんとか命はつないだが苦しいのは依然アライズアライズはかなり苦しいと思いますこれはさあこれが最後のウェーブかお互いにありすぎたがないバニラ状態これドゥームあもなくレストのサウンドバリア上がったがハリーワンキルさあこれはサウンドバリアがさあハルチェーンここはレストのサウンドバリアが間に合ったさあこれは潜在一流の後期しかしホーファックがなぜかワンキルえただアスターも後期してるさあアライズ残り7メーター詰め切るかこのマウガが溶けないこのマウガが硬い硬すぎる時間を稼がれるとまずいぞどうにかしなければいけないが無慈悲のサインドバリア重ねての傷ずれ走りそしてゲージ入ってもたまったさあ後ろからマウガが寄ってきているさあこのハリーのオーバークロックなんとかマウガが生み出したい生み出してくるはしかしワイドスコーズバスム間に合った間に合ったアライズ残り3ペーターいけるかいけるのか金銭機能大逆転アライズプロジェクト成し遂げた大きな大きな一生いやしかも追加で抜いているこの残党狩り押し引きの判断というのがインソムニアが2部がありますさあこれはリスマイまで制圧するような勢いですがあれああれファビこれ気づいているかえあ誰も気づいていないぞこれは致命的な C9 が誰も気づいてないあのイゾムヤどうしたんだ伝説の大ーブラストで線であったような後ろを見てさあカートが誰もカートに気づいていない誰もだったらこれオーバータイムが発生オーバータイム発生しているさあカート
まさかのフィニッシュ何が起きてるんだドライバーバンビーによってカートフィニッシュ<笑>単独運転成功です
welcome back everyone to the final match of the night. Here is week five. I'm, I'm G-Clef. I'm not Wolf. You're Wolf. I'm Wolf. It says it right there. Yes. Sorry, I was too captured. Your name's I was, right there. I was, I was too captured by your bar back at Joker Town, which I never noticed. Now we know. Yeah, I wanted to make the joke a lot back in the day. I don't know if I ever did, like in the Overwatch League days. Mm -hmm. But, uh... Yeah, it's my my little special bar in Junker Town. Yeah, but that's why I hope the people don't pick that map, so I don't. So people don't find out about my bar. It's a secret bar. Top secret. I know you keep on going to you. You like you like search. You like going on a search to find some really cool bars out there. Yeah, and then I keep it to myself, and until only my special friends get to come. No. But now Wolf's Woods is known to everyone, so I guess I, I guess I can't go there anymore. <laughs> G Clef. So no more Junker Town. Well, it's still allowed in our upcoming match. As a loser, we'll keep on selecting that. But of course, higher seed does get the control. Higher seed does get the control map pool for the first map. And then after that, it will be loser's pick. Here's our final matchup here. Second seeding decider match. Insomnia versus Six Blow. We've had this one in the round robin. Yeah. And it was a win, of course, a win for Six Blow. Surprisingly, though. Actually, it was a win for, uh, yeah, it was a win for Insomnia. Oh, so yes. Three Insomnia 3-1, yes. yes. And that was, that was actually quotes. a big, uh, that was a big upset. Um, it was a really cool series. And I think that, um, Going into this match tonight, I, I favor Insomnia again. Last time I thought it was an upset. I thought, okay, Insomnia looking better and better. Now I think they're just the stronger team. They've improved so much throughout the course of the season. Their meta reads have been really good. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they are going to look tonight. We'll talk about these rosters. Um, you know, we've had a bit of a DPS diff, I think, in our both of our first series. But I think this is going to be a much closer one with Undersea and Daisy. They seem to be... Arguably, right now, our best Tracer Echo team mm -hmm. uh, when they are playing that. They might not necessarily play that today, but they are super good at it. So, if they want to follow what we've seen from some of our Korean teams, um, you know, in WCS Korea last week, then we definitely could see them go back to that old favorite. Leonoptrix, also great at Junker Queen, mm -hmm. but he has the good Arisa as well. Also, Gotsen can also play Ramatra and Undersea, very well known for his Genji. So, in terms of hero pull, this team's got it, like, separately. So they have Specialist for a couple of tank pull and also, also the DPS pull. And on the opposite side, their opponent, a Six Blow, TQQ, Docs, Rarami. Rarami, who we, who we did not see for a long, long time. Pressure here, one of the most uh, POTM player, Max. And Takume, Kiru, Mine to finish well. things up. really played this season. Mm -hmm. Pressure, uh, I think, for the majority of the regular season was our best tank player. Uh, in the league, and I think KSG and Leonoptrix are actually vying for that position right now. I'm not saying pressure's not, but it's not as clear, cut, and dry as it was at the beginning of the season. So his Doomfist in particular was his best, but yes. his Orisa has been pretty good too. So uh, I am really looking forward to this match. This matchup is the best one of the day. It might be the best one of our entire seeding deciders. Let's take a look at the stats here for Six Blow. They ended up dropping down the third place in the round robin. Insomnia comes in as higher seed. Their team fight win percentage actually much better here in week four. First kill percentage much higher. Six Blow had that tough match, of course, in that final week, so that does mm -hmm. affect these stats. But you see, after first death, a fourth of the time Insomnia is winning as well. As both teams, six and two from the regular season, only one map differential. And also, even if we went to head-to-head, -head, Insomnia did win that match head-to-head, -head, so it would be second place Insomnia. But as you can see from the numbers, very close uh, from what they had from the round robin. So expecting a very close match, a slight favor to Insomnia. And we're actually going to Nepal, second time of the day. Yeah, another Nepal here, so... No Busan, no, no Oasis. No Busan, no Oasis. It's not going to be happening today, sadly. Um, no Ilios, not today. But uh, Nepal should be a fun one here. Great map for historically Insomnia and Leonoptrix's is Junker Queen if he does want to play it. I think we'll probably be seeing Arisa here this time around, but mm -hmm. this has been his best control map. So I'd love to see him play it here if he feels comfortable in this meta right now to actually pull it out as a bit of a curveball. Yeah, and we'll see where we go into starting from Nepal. I think a lot of team comp can be changed depending on where we go into. Well, second Nepal of the day. Let's get it going. Insomnia versus Six Low Map One. Some of those stats we had there at the end for Six Blow. I mentioned that tough match they had was against Veril 0-3. Mm -hmm. They fell down to in their final match of the season. So that is 
why Insomnia was able to beat them by just one point to be the number two seed. We'll see if they can maintain number two or even get potentially number one oh, yes. in the seeding decider tournament here as Leonoptrix is going to be sticking with the Arisa for now. Pressure starts Sigma. Yeah. Very Undersea. interesting here. It's going to be putting the pressure on TQQ as Undersea is on the Echo. Love to see it. So Sigma, I think Six Blow would love to exactly where Sigma is supposed to be off to the side. As Undersea with that air control, Insomnia, of course, on the opposite side. So this makes a lot of sense, but Leon Objects looking for that poking available to poke in. Off to the side, here's Pressure. Taking the first steps. And as we unlock, there's Pressures. Slowly eating away. Also, Leon Objects getting a taste. Here's Sticky on the back with the Stickies. Has to be careful. There's Undersea all the way in the back. So he's doing a great job. Trying so there is well, that's a, a quick pick from Tracer and the Soldier. The damage is just insane. Could not have enough cover there. As losing Blink will be the second to go. There's a cap from Six Flow starting things off. With the Absorb there coming through from Pressure as well as the shield he has, he ends up actually doing way more than the Anoptrix can do in this fight. Look at the difference in old charge here between these two tank players. And once the Anoptrix armor is gone, TQQ just blows him off the point there with a really nice rail shot. TQQ was under so much pressure, but he didn't survive through his Dukes. Will be okay here, but a very scary moment for him. Somnia need this Kitsune rush to finish so they can actually aggress onto the point. 2%. Ooh. What a kill on Undersea, as Echo was supposed to be the side pressure for Six Blow. Insomnia has to back off once again with 32% now for Six Blow. What a great start for them, as they didn't even have to use any ultimates. No. Karo, was... though, he's ready He's ready now with this Kitsune Rush, so he should be able to get his team onto the point here. Leonoptrix needs that speed up here to actually get in and do the yeah, damage required. on top of that pulse bomb potential. There's a Kitsune Rush from Karu. Going back into the point with Contest. Dukes onto the back line for that side back pressure. Does that have the pulse bomb still in Matrix early up? And the flux. Tracer goes down in the middle. Under C with that beat. Forcing everyone off the point. And capturing Sigma will be the first. But still cannot get the kill. There's a field. Great save by Zakume, but pressure. He will eventually go down. And it seems like Insomnia is just cleaning things up. Yeah, 75%. Looks like it's going to be what Six Blow get. We'll take it up to 77, technically, here in the end. A lot of damage and healing done by Karo in the last extended fight there, so he's going to have his Kitsune Rush fairly soon here. And they do have, of course, Overclock with the Terra Surge. So, so many tools here for Insomnia to defend this point, but if they mess up this fight, it's basically a guaranteed win for Six Blow here. So, have to be super cautious, very well coordinated. I want to see the angle Daisy is holding right now, because, yeah, there we go, because his overclock could be the deciding factor here. TQQ getting high ground. So I think he wanted to get under C. It was not enough for the damage. Daisy gets picked up by Dukes with that overclock. And but TQQ with the beat will be able to survive extra miles. And six below pops big two ultimates. And was there a point? And there was the flip. TQQ really handling that situation extremely well. Overclock getting tons of value. Leonoptrix popped there. And now Six Blow, control of this choke. And off the point, this, Le uh, this uh, Leonoptrix ult feels fairly useless. Try to get in for a tag under C. Tag. Leo is on point. There's a Terra Surge. But KZ, Daisy already gone. The six Blow, some ultimates coming up. There's the Ape Matrix. Pressure still there. Stickies on the Sigma. Okay, hold up, Daisy. Pressure might have overextended a little bit after the barrier was gone. With the duplicate from Undersea, Insomnia was able to provide some extra damage that they needed at the moment. And this longer fight is certainly going to go forth. Insomnia, finally a flip. Yeah, Liam Noctrix was able to get onto the point. His Terra Surge bought a ton of time there. Daisy swapped over to the Tracer here to have that longevity in the team fight you were mentioning. See if TQQ will stick with this Cassidy. It looks like the answer is yes as he needs to knock this Echo out of the sky because Daisy here has backline access and undersea. If he is able to build a duplicate here, that's going to give him an extra life on this final team fight here. One team fight loss for Insomnia, and this is going to be the round for Six Blow. Blink also having sound barrier advantage here in this scrappy fight. Looking good for Insomnia. Okay, we'll get the engage from... Stop from pressure. Early flop catching Orisa only. 
but behind the wall won't be having enough damage and there's a beat from Blink. Keeping everyone. And it's just low. Where's the rest of the members? Here's Tracer on the back. Can't do much though. I'm just getting close to that duplicate. The U getting pressured. The field has to be used. Everyone in the corner. Trying to push them in. Pretty good beat by Ki Oh. Thank you. Eventually, with the extra pulse damage, picked off with Kara. That's though, a trade. For Dukes. Almost good the flip. Sonya still holding the capture. There's a flip from Six Blow. But with extra kill, I think that should do it. Insomnia, not just in the perfect position. The Anoptrix, though, does have Terra Surge. Can you pull off the extra damage you need, but not just by yourself, just has the supports next to you. And that's the entire team of Six Below capturing the first. Yeah, if they were able to get a little bit more with Karu showing up there with the heals, Daisy coming back in on Tracer, and the Terra Surge comes through, maybe they end up getting the flip there, but it was very close, but not enough. Six Below in a very back and forth first round will take it in the end. Did love the swaps we saw come through there. And this is just bread and butter for the side of Insomnia. Undersea and Daisy running the Echo Tracer. This is what they are most famous for, what they're most known for. Yes, Undersea has a great Genji and has had some of his flashiest plays there, but does play this a lot more. Fan prediction, yeah. extremely close. Isn't that the closest prediction yeah. that we had? So far, it definitely is. And Six Blow actually leading the charge, a more famous org right mm. now, but Insomnia trying to bring it back. Six Blow starting off though really well. And it looks like we're going to see the Echo once again and see if Daisy, yep, going to go back to Sojourn here. So no Echo, I think this is, or rather with no Tracer, I think this is a wiser way to play this in Sanctum here. Yeah, both Sojourns will have to, will have that distance to build some gauge and also the Railgun. Yeah, Duke's trying to go off the side and snap that, snap that Sojourn. We'll slide away into the point. Not enough damage there. But we'll be eventually getting that pick off with some trade though. Tiki also dead. For sure this time, the barrier might not be enough. And there's some more diving coming in from Insomnia. Protecting on that choke point. Yeah, supports here, Karu and Blink were under pressure from Dukes. I don't know if you guys were able to, to suss that out, but I was watching the health bars I knew was pushing them, but they keep each other alive, and then the push comes through. That was great coordination there from Insomnia saying, let's push the front line while Dukes is on the back line. If the supports can keep themselves alive, we will win that fight, push them to the choke. And now Undersea has a duplicate ready. I love Katsune Rush as well. So fantastic position here for Insomnia now. So we take an early engage from Insomnia, we even with that duplicate onto that extra Sigma. Six Blow, they just cannot come in. Buying some extra time. Might get a Flux. It's close to it. Looks like he's not quite going to get it, but... Oh, we'll eventually... Oh, just... Will not have enough time to actually pop that on the ground. Duke's on a nice flank angle here, but no great targets. As everyone is sort of together, there's an M Matrix from Six Blow forcing them... Well, maybe that end matrix was popped a little too far. Yeah, Karo is going to Kitsune Rush to get them out of there. If they can build Terra Surge and hold it in the stroke point, this is what Insomnia loves to do on Sanctum. It's definitely their best map or best point of Nepal historically here in OWCS Japan. So here's pressure for that Flux. See if he can find a big one. The team is so split, so smart here exactly. for Insomnia. Insomnia, they know exactly why pressure is coming out. It is about the time. Orisa blocking it. Almost got that isolation. There's a Flux. Orisa well, we plus them. Should be the target. But now he's got Terra output. Surge ready on this choke. Still cannot come out from the choke. 80 to 6, 71%. I love the patience here from Insomnia. And Six Blow just don't have tools. Sound Barrier, if it's blown off the point, they'll never win the fight with Blink having this follow up Sound Barrier. They're out of options here. They need a miracle. Stung on the Lucio. There's a Terra Surge, but the beat comes through from Kiru. And the beat is good from Blink, keeping everyone alive on Insomnia. And the later beat usually does a better job, as you know, from playing that much Overwatch. Duke's trying to do what he can onto the back, but the remaining four is just not having their time coming into the map anywhere close. There's a touch. Yeah, but he's split off now, and Sami is going to push. Yeah, with pressure dead. Oh! Good boop. They're losing the fight. But still with that duplicate, extra tracer. And that's going to do it. Dukes cannot touch a second time. That's 100 to 0.
100 to 0, a very dominant performance from Insomnia. Now, they did it with a reset this time, operating around the fact that they have Terra Surge there on the choke. Really loved the attempted flux there coming out from Undersea, where he had the uh, early duplicate onto the Sigma. And then that was the beginning of the end. Yeah, look. And then they just can't Leo, get out. <laughs> Leo just blocks this gate and yeah. says, you just can't go in. I mean, that's what he did on Junker Queen mm -hmm. um, when they were able to, to have that close series against Feral as well. Like, th this team is so good on the Paul. And whether it's Junker Queen or Orisa, Leo Noptrix, oh. definitely, I think, to me, is starting to push ahead of Pressure right now and potentially being the best tank here. Oh, wonder she's still playing Echo here. Yeah, I think this is fine. Can be quite good here. Obviously, you have a lot of space to work with mm -hmm. on the point itself. Off to the side, you can provide so much. But let's see where Six Blow wants to fight after checking the calm. Uh, some more pressure to you on a high ground. Right next to the point. And some low members under C caught. As the rest of the members Blink trying to survive. Low. Blink actually survived for a long time there. But the other members won't be able to survive. Now the problem with Insomnia's comp if they lose this first fight is mm. the Echo is so far away from Duplicate and with TQQ having full line of sight, full control, it's really hard for him to actually poke and build one up to contest the point. Leonoptrix is also going to struggle on the point without Kitsune Rush, so pressure, he's really actually quite fine here to continue to poke and stand in that choke. No one can really contest him right now. Undersea needs to find some sort of angle. Oh, look at his rotation. Pretty quick. Not get Dukes! I think he was the target that he, they wanted to go for. There's a Kitsune Kitsune. Rush early on from Karu. And Somnia wants to get this counter point done. There's a flame. Only 25% from 6 low. He okay. should be feeling okay with that. Blink, if he can build a sound barrier here, they should be able to hold on to this. This is the race between these Lucios right now. The Blink is winning. More healing because there's been more damage overall towards Insomnia here. Undersea also going to get that duplicate here very soon. Great heal there from uh, Sakume to keep Dukes alive. Early aim Matrix down on the capture point. The Pulse Bomb. Got it. Blink. Missed it. Hit. Exactly. Might be 4%. Four, four, four off that barrier. Now with an extra member, Six Blow will have that se uh, second flip for them. So unfortunate, Blink dies. That was so critical from mm -hmm. Dukes. They kept Dukes alive, they tossed heals on Sakamai, put the heals on them. He then closes and kills Blink. That's no sound barriers. It's gonna be a stagger here on to Undersea. But no sound barrier means no duplicate to come through. Every single moment that Six Blow just did there to get Dukes that opportunity ended up leading to such a massive advantage in this game now. And now they may just have to sound barrier to approach the point, and Kuro is gonna have the defensive one. And this is looking very bad for Insomnia right now. Yep, on top of that beat, Pressure will have that Flux to cut them off. And that's why Insomnia actually hits into it. And a Sigma duplicate. And an early beat. Doesn't fight them too much. Eats a ton of damage from Tiki Q, but still alive. And also the Flux was used in the middle. The pressure from the top. So Six Blow is forced off to the side. And B comes down from Kiru. Costing so much work for the team. The field is gone. Here's Leo with the Terra Surge on the point. Can you catch anyone? You get one with other CAT QQ gone. Six Blow, they still have four members up. We'll get the cap, maybe, but I just don't know if they win this one. Karu is going to have to commit the ult. There's a flip finally for Insomnia. But Six Blow, they have some leisure. They have 90%. Six Blow with a lot of discipline here. Just back off, regroup. They're going to have the Ant Matrix here for Sakume to look for some damage from high ground here. Dukes also, once again, looking for a potential Pulse Bomb angle. Yeah, I think tracking he was looking for Echo. In the air, but Echo's all the way down. And Leonoptrix focused Tiki Q with that Railgun again. Daisy dead. And man, Undersea just cannot find anywhere to hide. That's the cleanup. 10 player streak. Can Doomfist come in touch? No. Nope, and that will be control win for Six Blow. Six Blow taking the lead here in this series. It was a very close set of uh, rounds there. Obviously, the second one was 100 to 0, but they ended up having a close first fight. Sanctum does end up being that way a lot of the time with the choke point control. That last one back and forth a little bit there. Finally, Undersea is struggling to get value on the Echo. You mentioned it when he did stay on yes, it. I'm actually surprised that he's staying on it the entire game. He still have Genji, some other DPS which he excels on. Yeah, I but think you don't want to play Genji into Sigma. I think he'd rather stick with the Echo, but he just wasn't able to actually coordinate some of those picks with his teammates. And after you lose the first point to that Sigma, then Echo is like, 
Am I shooting at barriers? Am I sh shooting at the supports? The supports are <laughs> positioned really well. There's a Batiste there, so Immortality Field makes it hard to get those kills. So you're really just looking for a duplicate timing. Mm -hmm. His Sigma dupe, that third round around, um, definitely not the same value that he got on Sanctum. So definitely a opportunity, I think, for that Echo to, to pop off. And I think it is his best hero so far this season, but it doesn't work out. Yeah, not on that third. As you, as you, as we all saw from Dukes, like, where are you, Undersea? Like, I'm looked, I'm just looking out for you. And Undersea is like, actually just hiding behind the wall. And Echo's just hiding behind the wall this entire game. Uh, which means that he's having a tough time. He should know the best. But still willing to contest. Which means that I think they certainly had some some of uh, teamwork practiced with that Echo on the map. And we'll oh. see how this goes from, from here on. Now, this is a crazy shot in the dark. But I would love to see... Eichenwald from Insomnia. I think hey. it's a great map for their playstyle. I think it's a map where Echo is going to, to really excel. Uh, you have a lot of space to work with, and you can utilize Tracer Echo really well on the map. And obviously, what uh, what Undersea likes to do with his Echo, instead of duplicating the tank, where Sigma is going to be a little bit less value on the, uh, Eichenwald because there's not really great barrier angles, is duplicate the Tracer. And that's what he does really well. Then he pushes um, with Daisy, and then they end up blowing up the back line. Or just bursting down the front line. They're so versatile in what they can do with it. Eichenwald also allows you to then like recall the Tracer back up the sky, drop mm -hmm. down to other people. I do think that that's a map that like my my brain really feels like I would really love to see this team play on now that's in the pool. But who knows how much they've really pra practiced or prepped it because it, uh, the pool just opened uh, today and was only announced, as you mentioned, a week ago. So we'll probably see something a little bit more normal, but that's like kind of where I would love to see this team play. Mm -hmm. It's my dream. Some hybrid? Uh, no. Nope. We're going to Flashpoint. Now, this has been, like, Control and Flashpoint have been Insomnia's best map types so far this tournament. So mm -hmm. I'm not shocked to see this coming through. And Suravasa, also we've seen some really cool strategies from them. The Junker Queen, but sometimes also the Bastion, the Malga. So this team does have a, a wide variety of picks they can go here. They might just play Tracer Echo again, because that's what they're so good at. But... Not a shock here. If you lose the momentum on this one, though, on your two best map types, though, and Six Blow win two in a row, you're in big trouble. You're going to have to reverse sweep with Six Blow having the map pick every single time. Yes, it is Flashpoint, as you do need that mobility to go, go around the map to look for that rotation. Maybe catch the opponent off guard. But here is map number two. We're going to Suravasa, and currently Six Blow in the lead. Don't poke those teeth. Do you know the difference between crocodile and an alligator? Uh, I used to, in terms of like the way to identify it, is like which teeth are going up, which teeth are going down. Is it, is it really by the teeth? I thought it was more of a regional thing. Well, like if if you're in a region, you see two, and you were like like a region that has both. You could tell by the teeth is what I was taught, but I don't remember which one is which, so it's completely useless, G Cliff. But we I, are gonna see. I also have no clue. That's why I asked. Undersea Genji, which we have seen on Surabasa in the past. Another reason why this team has yet another comp they can run here on Flashpoint. Uh huh. Uh, that they would pick this, and Undersea's great at it. As to you again on the Sojourn Flashpoint. You can never go wrong with Sojourn. We've seen this before. Now, unlike uh, Nepal, this time you actually can circumvent the Sigma and actually get behind him. So the Genji feels pretty good into this comp in this map. Mm -hmm. See how quickly he can build those Dragon Blades. 20% right now. Pretty slow build. Yeah, it says, oh, Leo. Getting forced to go back. Low HP. Oh, not enough. I have a feeling from the back line. Will be first to go. And second to follow will be Daisy. Dukes just not on camera all the time, but always providing some uh, flanks. Yeah, pressure being the backbone of this push, but like you said, Dukes' flank there, fantastic. And the Anoptrix pushed out under seat. The last to die does build a little bit more of his Dragon Blade. But he's only halfway there, and you only get realistically one strong eco push mm. per flashpoint. This is not control, so Undersea really needs this push to be the one that gets him his blade. He probably needs to use it on this push with Sound Barrier. They do have the Sound Barrier advantage because they took more damage in that fight. Blink's able to heal more of that up. So, if they don't get this, it's probably six blows cap. We'll see what happens, obviously, when we move to the next one. And this Dragon Blade will be available there if he doesn't get it. Yes, pressure with that kill. So close that flux already. Leo only half. And pressure, pressure crushing them right now. Would love to use that flux, but not the best time to do so as they're already winning. Oh, he's just gonna press it. 
and get some extra kills while he's at it with the teammates. And this is one of those weird scenarios where actually it's correct to ult on Chase because mm -hmm. if you don't, Undersea might have an opportunity to finish that blade in the extended fight and then maybe end up getting towards your backline, killing your Lucio before he gets sound barrier. I actually really like this call from pressure to ult so that Undersea has no chance of blade. In fact, will not have it for the contest of the first cap of the second point as well. So, yeah, you're not going to have your Gravitic Flux, similarly strong ultimate, but I think the entire crux of Insomnia's comp is going to be that Dragon Blade, and without it, comp is so hard to pull off here for Insomnia. See if Undersea can make something happen here on this push. He will have it as we get to the point, but there's so many ways to shut it down. That's right. It was the only ultimate used from pressure from six low. So has four more available as we're looking into a lot more ultimates coming from Insomnia too. Yeah, and Insomnia with this blade can be shut down by Immortality Field. They're going to have to focus that. Also Barrier. Quick rush and the Matrix up from either side. And Undersea looking for that blade potential. Backline access. There it is. First the field and also the beat still has to force himself out of that zone. Insomnia will have the first cap with the counter beat from Blink. Daisy to follow up after the beat. Needs to get something done, but the pulse bomb from Dukes! Just cancels everything. Okaru, hold on. It's one more trade from the DPS and the tanks just in the front. Pressure. He can't be much more done. This. That's a pretty good javelin. That was a slight cancel there. So this is a huge for Insomnia because they build up 50% here. Undersea gets half of a blade, and they didn't kill anyone with the Dragon Blade, but they got Immortality Field, mm -hmm. they got the Sound Barrier out. And those are two tools that Pressure in the front line of Six Blue need if they're going to win that longer fight, especially with Leonoptrix playing that out as well as he did. So Insomnia, they're not out of the woods just yet, but that was about as well as it could have gone for them. Massive win for Insomnia. Well done by Undersea. As you mentioned, forced out so much. Here's six below, trying to go back in as 87%. Talking last fight. You use the flux, there it is. Not catching no one, not even the Risa. Just steps out of the boundary just for a split second. Sonya about to take this one, but we'll see some low HP members. Actually, the Matrix on the back. And also the field to keep pressure alive. Let's see if that is enough. Here's Genji from the side. And that should be enough, folks. Insomnia about to take the second. That's it's not, the number one one. It's not really a contentious matchup between the Arisa and the Sigma once the Arisa closes the gap on him, but when she has that attack speed coming through from Kitsune Rush, pressure is just going to melt. And that he did. Is we're going to see a swap to Zari here. I wonder if TQQ will match the Genji, or if he plans on going to Cassie. No, just going to play Zari a Tracer Soldier, and that's not really a comp, but... See what pressure can get done with this. Obviously can do a lot to mitigate the Genji damage with Bubble, and then maybe try to melt him down. Mm -hmm. I think that's just gonna be the attempt here of first cap, but they don't have Pryo right now, and Leonoptrix has his ult at the ready. They see the Zarya now, they're aware of it. Uh -huh. Remember pressures Zarya, not just providing Bubble, he does tons of damage. Ever since that big buff on Zarya. Okay, pressure taking some damage, and the Flashpoint opens up. And the first capture, looks like it's coming through for Insomnia as we do see that B defensive one. Don't cure to block that Terra Surge, Deji down, not in that beat! Undersea, trying to turn the tide with that Dragon Blade. It's one. It buys enough time on the back line for the team to come back after a death on Daisy. Massive blade from Undersea again. This guy's Genji is so good, you called it out on the Paul. He brings it to Flashpoint again. And he is coming up big with this one, gets the exit, the exit kill there on the Dukes as well. And I love the idea of, okay, we're going to have pressure on Zarya. We have Sound Barrier. It's going to be the best tank you can fight for neutral on, ultless. But it doesn't matter because the Dragon Blade does come through here. Insomnia in a fantastic position now. They do have the Kitsune Rush again. Pressure will be able to stave off more of Leonoptrix's Kitsune Rush left clicks this time, but for how long? Yeah, pick Rush from Karu. As Insomnia just dives in. After the bubble, you just do not have anything else, right? That's the question. Insomnia backs off after contesting a little bit, delaying the rotation. I like this play. 8%. TQQ finds Undersea. That's big. Now, six below, they can contest in with the overtime. Do you really spend how much ultimates are you willing to spend? There's a Matrix. All from Sakume, and the stick is, the stick is good, but the field, good enough. Still left with four numbers. There's a, there's a flip. 
And Sony actually buying a good amount of time with just four men members up. Under Siege should be back in a couple of seconds. Sony need to get out of here and regroup. And it looks like they are going to be able to kind of kite their way out. Still, the Obnoctrix does actually end up falling. Do not actually have the successful retreat, so this is a ton of extra time bought for Six Blow. And this is great for Six Blow because their their biggest fear was that they would have to use ults to defend this point here and give Insomnia an ult advantage to maybe actually win this and then have the advantage moving into what could be the final point here, Flashpoint. They actually get to win this fight without pressure dropping that Graviton Surge. Kiru is going to have a sound barrier to match Blinks now as well. And obviously with the positional advantage that they have, with no Dragon Blade, it's a huge momentum swing here for Six Blow. And one Big Bang can actually be the point now as they're leading in. Daisy gone, Insomnia, not the best timing to lose a Tracer there. Which means the Undersea might need to have a big moment with a Blade. Wait, hold up! Both Tracers gone, 4v4. Now the Anomatrix pushing into the point. Coming through here early on, and the counter beat and the Graviton catching everyone, but there is no pulse bomb along with it. Coming down on the back line, here's Undersea, almost has that play, but won't even need it for the fight. It seems like low, low HP members are all healed back up for Insomnia. The timing of that sound barrier from Blink could not have been more perfect. And yes, Kira has the counter barrier, but that was a great Graviton Surge from Pressure there. It's insane that Six Blow weren't able to get anything out of that fight because Pressure was full energy on Zarya mm -hmm. and they all dove him at the same time. He had a massive ult, but Blink predicted the timing and basically as soon as the barrier, the Graviton was dropped, like at the exact same timing, the barrier is up. They can kill no one. Undersea gets to keep his blade here now and in Insomnia. A huge swing of momentum back now into their favor. Let's see what it, this first play is going to do for Undersea as they contest for the opening of the point. Ten seconds to go. Undersea will see if he can find the backline. This time, Kira will not have a sound barrier to keep himself alive. And another great flash point for the Genji to actually have the blade. Here's Leo on point. Pressure. When you find a better target with zero energy on himself. Makes yourself up the Kume. Off to the side, but Insomnia just having a better position. And Daisy, that stick gets the field out, and immediately after that, late time from Undersea. What a teamwork there. Undersea and Daisy, uh, I, they've got to be the best DPS duo right now in OWCS Japan. When they play together like this, it's just unreal. Pulses out, drops down the defensive uh, the field. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the field, yeah, immortality field, thank you. I'm just so hyped about this. And then Undersea chases them down after the field is gone. Chases down TQQ. It's going to force him to swap to Cassidy after this moment. Now Leonoptrix mm. building up to that Terra Surge. They're going to have the point controlled here, the choke point. And they have Karu's ultimate coming online here. So pressure is going to melt to Leonoptrix's damage. The bubble's on cooldown especially. It's already got one. We'll get a second one back up here. Pulse bomb. Pulse huge. Duke somehow got the pulse bomb onto Undersea. That's against he gone. But still the beat comes down from Blink. They want to finish this that right now, right here. Pressure dead. TQQ gone. What a turnaround with Genji dead. I mean, even without Undersea, Leonoptrix's Terra Surge there is so fantastic. Builds it quickly with Karu dropping down his ultimate. And then they burst down Pressure, who doesn't have the Graviton Surge. And this is all done before Kiru can have his sound barrier ready. TQQ and Pressure are going to have to do some big, heavy lifting in this final fight here if they're going to have a chance of bringing this to five rounds. It might just be Insomnia tying us up one to one. Yeah, it's way too close. They might even get the, not even get the touch. They're getting close. There's a touch, but already the damage has been done from Insomnia. And even without the pulse, the three point is enough. Now Insomnia coming back big time. We have a series, Wolf. We have a series, finally, one to one. And Six Flow and Insomnia both playing so well. Pressure Zarya swap ends up working out in some aspects, but the Tsune Rush and good teamwork ends up striking back there. Pulse Bomb into the Dragon Blade combo between the DPS duo there. Undersea and Daisy for Insomnia, pretty insane. Mm -hmm. TQQ also with some fantastic moments um, across both the Cassidy and the Sojourn there. This is the kind of series that I want to see more of here in OB OWCS Japan, and today, since we're tied up, we're going to get potentially three more games of this. Yeah, potentially three more. And we, we the best part, we don't know which one we're going into. And that's often the best part. But right now, just back and forth. Duke's on a really good tracer. Daisy Undersea back and forth. That teamwork was amazing with the Pulse Bomb getting the field and the Dragon Blade. 
And also, Pressure not having his best day, I would say. Oh, and Control, yes, pretty good, but Suravasa looked like half and half in terms of tank, tank fights. The Zarya did seem a little bit desperate, but they were able to get some good, efficient fights with it. And mm -hmm. I think it was a good idea there, but the answer, especially with the sound barriers coming through from Blink, was uh, just enough to actually bring us to one to one. What a sick series. Yeah, it is indeed a series. Dome on Tide currently. Let's see who ends up winning at the end. But before that, before going into map number three, let's take a break. When we come back, let's find out who the winner is.
Welcome back, everyone. We're in the middle of our final match tonight. 1-1 one, one tied together, and we are yet to find out which map we go into. Loser's pick once again. Yeah, so if you're just tuning in, Asia exclusive, by the way, you won't find that in EU. You're not going to find that in North America. It's the Asia exclusive loser picks and picks map type. So mm -hmm. we've had already control and then multi-control flashpoint. So multi multi control. <laughs> um, so now we're going to multi 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 control and push, right? Um, no, it's uh it's it's likely to be push is is your theory. You think six blow will take us to push? It is their map choice. I think six blow plays better on push because just because of pressure, how well he's able to do, not just on Doomfist, but just around the robot, you just have a pushing objective basically around you. And he can just do so much more work compared to what Leo or Gotham can provide. That's what I think, theoretically, on the map. But we can certainly go into other maps if they have it ready. Because we certainly do have a lot of new maps in the pool. So we'll find that out. Midtown. This is what I told you I thought they were going to take. How did you know? I, right before this happened, but Jinko was like, I think we we're going to push. I was like, I think there's tickets to Midtown. Because this is a map that Six Blows look really comfortable on for me mm -hmm. um, this season. And we've seen a lot of different comps from them. I don't think we're going to see D.Va, for example, but we've also seen, you know, um, the swap up Max comes in, play a little D.Va. And it has been pretty interesting how many different ways we've seen Six Blow play around this one. And right now, with this new meta shift, it's probably just going to be Arisa, but it's also been a map where pressure has looked amazing on Doomfist, even though we're not really seeing that right now in this meta. So a map that the archetype or the architecture rather of the map, they're super comfortable with. So. That's why I expected it. Uh, and it is, of course, because Insomnia took that last map. If they lose this one, they will have map pick. If they had lost the last one, they would never have any more. We'll see one one tied. The map choice of six blow. Let's see if they can bring this map up and lead it in the series. One one tied at the moment. Insomnia versus six blow. That's what everybody thought flying cars were going to be like. Yeah. I don't think they're going to be like that, G Clef. I thought by when I was uh, when I was in elementary school, by 30, 30 ish, we should be seeing we should be seeing flying cars and flying flying trains. Not even close. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Uh, I don't know if that's happening in our lifetimes, G Clef. Yeah, we just started electric electric cars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're a bit behind. Mm -hmm. Okay, Leonoptrix on Winston, by the way. Okay. And Six Blow will have the uh, attacker's advantage here to be able to swap composition. Going to match the Winston. No Cassidy, interestingly enough. See yeah, this map they... is a lot more Ash and yeah. Under Seas. For, for the first point, at least, it's a lot more Ash. Yeah. Ash and Echo. Can be difficult to burst down the Winston as Ash, but you can threaten the rest of the comp because they're threatening Blink right now. It's also because there's a lot of rotations uh, in the room where you can use the dynamite to harass and do damage on the multiple targets. As Leo jumping back and forth. And there's pressures, Winston, too. Daisy very low, but we'll get healed up. Tiki goes down. Yeah, great grenade actually catching the kill from Karu. The grenade did get a buff, so it might have been a help there. There's Daisy. Still the Tracer, Dukes and Daisy both outs. Just excellent Tracers, by the way. Let's see who builds that Pulse Bomb first. Yeah, just trying to poke out a duplicate here. So easy to get a Primal Rage if you duplicate the enemy Winston. Yeah, 60% of the way there. Can be a great stalling tool. Purple here is going to take out a lot of Leonoptrix's health, mm -hmm. but he maintains armor, which is really important. Yeah, Winston. You can't really go directly to the points, and you will take tons of damage open ground. Looking for oh, quick nano though, and let's go to sleep, monkey. Yeah, really frustrating um, to end up getting slept during that nano. Primal's out for pressure, much faster build for him. And that's exactly when you strike into the point to get the capture, and forcing them, chasing them all the way in the back. That may very likely just be the cap here, Leonoptrix. If he had Primal, maybe they could try to stall this out with Daisy and then use Recall, get Blink onto the point, and then maybe there's, there's something there. But I don't think that realistically they'll be able to offer much of a fight here. You can see Daisy just waiting on the entrance here. Will come in for the tag. They want to go for the contest. I don't know about this. 
Okay, there's a nano on the pressure. We have to keep up around the point. Duplicate for Undersea as well. He really wants to stop this oh. cap. Does, does not have the rage because Leo went down so quickly. And that's already a two. Two kills and the duplicate gone from Undersea. Insomnia can be contest more. And I, I will tell you guys a little caster, a little tip, a little peek behind the curtain about casters when I say it. I don't know about this. That means they do know about it, and it's not a good thing. <laughs> um, as there was just no way with with there's no not enough sustain to keep Leonoptrix alive there for him to do a primal. Undersea and Daisy really wanted to saw a double tracer there, so he could end up getting the primal rage. But was a pipe dream, and now it's a lot of ults down. And six blow have control of this cart. We'll be able to push out and get TQQ into line of sight. It does have a bob as well. It didn't even need to contest the point. Going slowly. There's a grenade with a dive. Should work on to the backline members. Nice teamwork from Insomnia. Finally bringing out. Reason for the Anna Winston. Yeah, After the just rage, one just pick, though. One pick should be good enough. Didn't really force that many ultimates. I bought them about 30 seconds plus. Yeah, here's Explode stabilizing around the payload. Dukes looking for the low HP member. Get that pulse bomb off. Might be going to other C here is Leo again with the net. Oh, go to sleep. Pretty good sleep darts coming out from Sakume. The pulse bomb on Takaro. Exposed on the back. And pressure. That's exactly where he jumps. And that's a monkey win. And the cart pushing. Yeah, and... Oh. It's gonna be another pick here. Pressure helping to secure that kill on the Daisy. Now they're gonna get control of the car wash here. And TQQ does have this uh, line of sight. Undersea, awkward position right now. Trying to get out of this building. Not really safe against this Ash. And doesn't have a duplicate. So they have to slow play this defense for now. Contesting so challenging here without Leonoptrix as ultimate. Look might at the angles here. Yeah, might have to use a nano early up because there's rage from pressure. That's Leo going in. No nano yet. Blink dead. So much control here for Six Blow on the attack with this high ground position. It's so hard for Insomnia to defend. Okay, Six Blow about to touch, and Insomnia might have to give this one up with nothing else. Yeah, they gotta let it go. I mm -hmm. think further contesting would have been a, a big mistake and. This is just Six Blow's understanding of this map. You see it every single time where right was the approach B. They set up that right side high ground and just pick away at the tanks. They had tank ult advantage. The Obnotrix didn't have ult. Caro didn't have ult to allow him to get it. And without Undersea's dupe, which Six Blow tracked all of that, they knew it was just going to be a slow and easy win for them. And they still maintain ult advantage. Yeah, Leo versus Pressure has been on top. Slight better use of ult Winston, I would say. For pressure, stickies, DQ out under C. Still having Echo on the third point, by the way. Yeah, just sticking with this. Does, does have the duplicate now, so a lot more relevant here for this fight. And that was a huge pick on the TQQ. And Sakume's Ana is just out of control good. Does end up keeping pressure alive mm -hmm. there. Kiru as well. Does have the rally coming up soon. Some extra push being done as Insomnia. Five ultimates. Ready to go, there's Big a first. Win. Duplicate into Anna. And it's a pulse box dropping. Leo still has that rage. Same for pressure. And Nano onto Kiru. I think they were hoping to actually force pressure's ult out. They failed. And now Undersea ultimate wasted. He's nanoed, but what can he get done as an echo here? A sleeping monkey on Nano was wasted, but still Undersea did so much done, so much work. Within that time, the rage has to be popped. Extra kill here. Ends up getting the, the kill on the Sakume there, despite uh, what looked like a pretty tough, like it was a tough nano to actually get value out of, but he just pushes the support, ends up getting the kill there. The Anoptrix having the ult advantage over Pressure, who doesn't get anything done there. 90 seconds to go here for Six Blow to finish this map. I think this Primal Rage is going to have to be big, and it's going to be into potentially a rally here. Mm -hmm. As Dukes yes. is trying to get backline access. Yeah, Dukes looking for the flank, along with that monkey. Yeah, Sticky Q back on Cassidy now. Trying to get Undersea, because it is closer distance for the final final third point here. Yeah, it's diving in once again. Undersea just running away in the air. There's a rage from pressure. Keeping everyone away from the cards. But no further kill. 
So there's you still good to go. The AZ recalls. Doesn't drop the pulse bomb yet. Here's engage once again on the Z gone. But it's with a bit of a trade. Blink down Dukes here. And this Anna is trapped. No way to survive, but Daisy with the pulse bomb and two. See what else he can get done though, as pressure losing half of his health here. Leon Optics has ult advantage and six blow kind of desperate suddenly here to actually get this finish. I think it's gonna have to be a big pulse bomb or a big nano here. As Leon Optrix is just waiting to drop down, get that primal and keep him off the cart. Even touching is gonna be a challenge now for six blow. It's a huge moment for Insomnia here for the defense as Tiki Q. 61%, now we're overtime on the cart. Nano on Leo, and he should be able to get that ult. Understand. Decent damage. Yep, and Leo finishing off. Yeah, even with that Nano, not enough damage, and TQ ends up going down. And I think that up, might be it. Docs still alive. Let's see if there are any more kills coming through from Insomnia. And this is the only one with the pulse one finds an extra, but way too many around from Insomnia as all the members are gone from six below. Two points and 70 meters. Very strong defense there at the final point for Insomnia. The first two though, a little bit shaky, especially A, where they commit to the contest and end up losing a ton of ground there. Sakame sleeps fantastic. I think pressure overall minus point C and getting the better of Leonoptrix and the Winston Mirror. And TQQ obviously playing from this high ground here doing a lot. And, you know, I look at this scenario here, pretty optimistic for Six Blow. I mean, Insomnia obviously could just win by finishing the map, but Six Blow looked so much better. Their understanding of A, and I'm not saying it's going to be a full hold, but I think getting a good time bank here for Insomnia is going to require a lot of good coordination. And Undersea is going to have to make a larger impact than he's done so far here on this third map because it's his best hero this season, right? The, the uh, Echo, he's played it a ton. Yes, the Genji is flashy and stuff, but the Echo has been his most consistent. And so far, you know, he's been shut down by TQQ. Mm -hmm. He's playing so safe that his duplicate builds are slow. And duplicating the Ana, you know, for example, hasn't really been too successful at getting them huge advantages. Maybe duplicating Dukes on the Tracer instead could be a better plan. We'll see what he does, as it is going to be once again the same comps here, even on attack for Insomnia. As you mentioned, Undus, he hasn't been super aggressive compared to the other games we've seen. Could also duplicate just the monkey and have a double dive along with Daisy. Yeah, that's also a good plan. Really quick to build the primal. We'll see how this goes as the Q still on Ash for the first point at least. As the engage come in for Insomnia, slow rotation. Great oh. shot. Goodbye, Daisy. And Leo backing off. And these sleep darts from Sakume has been pretty on point. I mean, he has been so good on this map, just in general. Whether it's a sleep, whether it's a healing output. Mm. Purples. Super high value. Karu trying to match here. Keep Leonoptrix healed up so he can build up a primal. Mm. Going into the back line now. Awkward moment here for Insomnia. They're super split. And dodges the grenade. Now he's just in trouble. Good heals from Blink. Trying to match what's being done on the side. Karu likely going to have that nano first. And I think both sides are kind of waiting for that first nano to hit. Yeah, Karu leading in that regard since Leonoptrix taken so much more damage than pressure has here on the attack. So we'll have the first nano. Undersea also just poking, just building a duplicate. Yes. Nano's out. Now we're going up. All the way in the air because that Ash can be, yes. As I say that, TQ finds a kill on the other C immediately. Good purple on three members of Six Glow and it's Insomnia. They just don't have any follow up. Can get the extra kills. There's some really good individual skills coming out, but. Yes. This is looking really rough for Insomnia now because they don't have the nano boost this time to get the Anoptrix into position, even though they will have a ton of ultimates in general. Six Blow can match all of them, and critically, they have a Bob. And Bob isn't the most impactful ultimate in Overwatch 2, but it is going to be one that can buy you a ton of time on the point and, mm -hmm. you know, relieve some of the pressure on this Winston. Pressure will, of course, then be able to hold his 
Primal a little bit longer. Yes. I mean, they don't even necessarily have to because they have Nano as well. Like, there's so many ways for Six Blow to delay. Oh, Dukes, with this kill. Speaking of delay. Might delay further as Six Blow certainly having some successful defensive moments. Now we're talking 137. As Insomnia still with the Rage. And both DPS ready up real soon. Rally coming soon. This Nano wins them from pressure. Has to turn the tide. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be the game plan. Nano him first on the defense. Leonoptrix though has to be the one to go in. There's the Bob. In the Rage. Can use to push all of them out. Yeah, but super low value here. Six Blow trade the Bob and they're like, we don't care. Sakume still has his Nano. They didn't commit anything here. There's a rally for both. Leo has no survivability anymore. He's so reliant on Karu. And double Ana. The Sleep Dart, the Duplicate gone. And that's an Angry Monkey. And pressure just... Stomping down on everyone. Can't be brought down. Okay, Daisy getting some work done here, but they need a little bit more momentum than this. Undersea gets the kill under pressure. Leo did some extra work on the back line with the Nano. Later Nano, but did a lot more work this time. Yeah, and you know what? I think that's actually just going to be the cap here. Daisy carrying super hard here, and Undersea also the double Ana kept Leonoptrix alive. It looked like Leo was definitely going to go down. It looked like no chance. Pressure has the second primal. He used his early. There's just no way he's going to survive, but the second Ana actually bought a ton of time and space, and then Daisy ends up getting those kills, cleans up. And Insomnia keep their chances alive here on Midtown. Most Sustain did a whole lot more as your Six Blow on the high ground. But that, that, was, that actually took them a good amount of time for the first cap. Insomnia does need some speed getting to the second point. As you have Karu all the way back here. Healing that Winston and also under C in the air. We're pretty low in HP. Also on traded with a recall. Does end up getting a kill. Forces another regroup. But next time we'll have that rage and, and the pulse bomb together with Daisy. And there's pressure off to the near the spot with the dome. Daisy. Yeah, both tracers just shooting it away, getting that mini heal. Okay, now on to Leo. Early pressure this time. And that's pressure going down. Yeah, without any use of ult here for Leo, just the nano boost. This is really ult efficient here for Insomnia. It's the second pick on the Dukes, and this should be the cart making it through Car Wash now. Skiru just holds up a shield and watches. And now they have the Primal Rage to actually contest the point itself. So six blow. They're gonna have their own, they're gonna have their own nano. The timing works out pretty nice for them, but Insomnia. Chances feeling very good here, especially oh, under the purple. Oh. It's just way too good on the back line, but there's a bit of a trade under C going down. For sure, with a pretty good kill, good catch. I think well done. Here's the rage for both. But is Sakume willing to use the nano after? Bomb from DQ out in the field with further delay. Yeah, this is looking really tough for Insomnia now. And, and Undersea could have duplicated there when he was about to go down to buy time, but he decided not to. He has it now, but it's too late, it feels. Let's see what the Tracer gets done. Oh, extra Tracer, no Kiru on the back line. Both supports are gone from 6 Okay, low, this could be it with 33 seconds left. This is the Undersea Daisy special, double Tracer. Yeah, with that, oh, that sleep as well oh, on the Dukes, and that will be the cap. On tracers. This is crazy. Now, I really didn't think there was going to be much of a chance. I didn't think they were going to have the staying power there. Mm -hmm. Undersea, I was like, oh, who's he going to dupe? They don't have the full back line, or they don't have a full backbone in this composition. If he tries to, to do pressure, they'll just delay the inevitable. But the double tracer actually does insane work. It was an expensive push, but they keep the chances of finishing this map alive. Yeah, that was risky because Sakume has been holding that mana for a long time now. Thought pressure should be getting that nano without the AC. Yeah, should be a good push from Six Below with no ultimates. Just a easy cleanup as they enter into the into the room now. Now Dukes can operate on the side room here while TQQ pushes the front oh, nano. door. Early up from pressure. Even with purple, might have to use that rage. There he it does. is. Everyone near the too. spawn. Okay. Gonna live, he buys a ton of time. Only one minute left here for Insomnia now. Pressure should be able to get back out. 
two ultimates used there. They have the rally Just for to buy this some push. Extra time. Zombie need to be super ult efficient because yes, they have ult advantage now, but they still have a long way to push 50 more meters. There's a nano into Leo. But to have that rage now, and this cart is pushing. I think it's best if he doesn't use it yet. Mm -hmm. Wait for the contest, push this cart forward and set slow push it. Rely on your honest healing. And wait for Daisy as he is rotating around. For a bolt has to recall. Still has the pulse. And Pressure does not have that Primal Rage. And yeah, that's why Leo is just holding his right now for the final contest. A lot of damage onto the back line, and here it is. Primal popped and he, oh, go to Big sleep. sleep though. In the meantime, Daisy was able to get They're pressure, pushing. They're pushing. A meter out. So yeah, they're about to have the touch. Less than a meter now. Now I don't want to do. Can this pulse? No, not going to change much. As he is purple. Cannot recall. And that's it. The and he's comes through. away from the payload. <laughs> Pressure slept here for the end as well. And G Clef, Insomnia move to match point. They got it done last time 3 1. Now mm -hmm. they're one map away from doing it again a second time to really solidify themselves right now as our second best team here. They might, if they could upset Veril, end up getting first seed actually going into playoffs. But very close game there. Lots of back and forth. I think that the unsung heroes of this game, well, maybe mm -hmm. they weren't fully unsung, so we need to give them credit a lot. We're both Ana players who played exactly. really, really well. Good sleep darts, really nice purples that were coming through. I thought the decision making, though, for Insomnia on when they wanted to use their ultimates for that final push was fantastic. And the, the final primal rage we saw there when they actually got everybody super low and he was able to push the Brigida mm -hmm. away, get cart control, was why the backline was able to kind of push the cart through kind of slowly there, force this awkward rush forward from a side of six blow where they were completely split apart and they didn't have the primal rage, as you mentioned, and that was the end of the map. So Insomnia just looked to be like, and it's only slight, it is like this slight, but the, the much better coordinated team. I mean, I'd say much better, but mm -hmm. it's, it's better enough to where they keep winning these fights and making the right decisions with their ultimates, whereas Six Blow seems so much more under pressure. I feel like Six Blow had a better understanding of the comp, yet couldn't actually get it together there on that final defense. They almost did. Remember about a minute ago where Pressure had that Nano and the Rage all the way to the spawn? I was shaking my hands like, is this really 100% required? Maybe to buy 15 more seconds, but the... Insomnia still had like 40 seconds to come back with a lot of ultimates coming online. So I think that was actually the decider towards the end. Some questionable decision. Of course, Pressure is a great player, but once you're out of the tool and the opponent has the Winston and he's not outclassing you by that, that far, Leo's actually playing a really good Winston along with an Ana. I think mm -hmm. we might go to Esperanza. Esperanza from Six Blow? Yeah. Hmm. It's, I feel like it's either Esperanza or it's something crazy like Dorado or Shambali. Um, if they try to play Coliseo, I think that could backfire in a big way. Insomnia are pretty good on Coliseo, so. So we have Flashpoint control hybrid, so. To escort him and uh, push Escort left. push. Hey, Havana. <laughs> There's I mean, some crazy could, maps out there. It could or a double happen. Junker Town. Well, <laughs> it could happen. We'll see how it goes. I don't think I don't think we'll go to Havana, but mm. you know I would love to see Widowmaker duels between um, Daisy and TQQ. I think that would be really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, you know I, I haven't been, been able to really see TQQ play Widowmaker so far this season, so um, that would be kind of my exciting thing to see if we do end up seeing it. As I, mean, so I don't I don't think there's any world where Romeo comes in. Uh -huh. I don't think there's any world where Gonsum comes in. Or Max, I think it's going to be same rosters, very likely. So yeah, so with that, I think the best part about Insomnia is that right now, Leo's actually doing on par against Pressure, especially with that Winston. Maybe Pressure doesn't feel that uh, comfortable playing on Winston compared to the other heroes we've seen. Like we've seen a lot of Sigmas, we've seen a lot of Doomfist where he excelled so much. But he's doing a great job, but this, I think it might actually come down from the Ana cover from the back as Karu, Sakume, both great Anas might be the change here as okay, we go into Colosseo. So no, no escort today. No, potentially no escort, maybe escort. I mean, I don't know. It feels like we're going to escort just based on how the series has gone really? so far. Really? Okay. But 
we'll see. Uh, Coliseo, I think, to me, when we, when we started the season off and we were seeing a ton of Coliseo, ended up getting less and less popular as the season went on. Um, we saw so much Echo, Tracer, Doomfist here. Mm -hmm. And both these teams are very good at it. A lot of our Korean teams also were super good at playing that on Coliseo. I don't think that it's the best map for Echo Tracer by any means on push, but it's one that I think that Insomnia has been very comfortable with, so I don't think they will change it up. I think they're going to keep Daisy and Undersea on that composition. The question is, do we see a swap to Arisa? Do we see a swap to, uh -huh. swap to Sigma here? Because I don't think Winston... I mean, I think Winston can work here, but it is very risky. It is indeed risky, and we might see some different things coming out from both players, Leo and Pressure. It is 2 on a lead from Insomnia. Could be their match point map if they finish it up, or 6 blow, bringing us to map 5 potential. Here's map number 4, Colosseo. All right, match point here for Insomnia. The robot spawn point, the center where the, there are large choke points on the right and left sides of the robot itself. That is where Winston is going to have its highest value mm -hmm. on this map. And they are going to start with it. Insomnia here, Leonoptrix playing this. Echo Tracer, un uh, unsurprising. And TQQ expecting the Winston here on the Cassidy. They also have the Sigma. I like Six Blows comp into this. I feel like they've already expected what Insomnia was going to do. And have the counter prepared. See how much damage TQQ can get done when these dives come through. Yeah, now with that Sigma, Cassidy has some cover with the barrier in front, but Under Z, as you can see, will be poking from the side. We'll see how the defense goes. Oh, with the sticky and the purple, the field has to be gone. Great reaction there from Sakume. Yeah, that was a really well-timed field. Great reaction there. Still, a lot of tools burnt. Six Blow will get control of this robot. Now, without the glasses, off to the side. Now, Six Below will have easier time actually flanking here as that will be the first kill going to Six Below. Dukes finding that one against Undersea's Echo. And without Echo in the air, which means that TQQ will have an easier time doing tons of damage. And then Optrix gets the bio grenade, but still in trouble. Double on the pulse. Oh. And that fight was already over, mm -hmm. but Dukes it is going to make it cleaned up here. And now Six Blow, full control of the cart and this Winston pick not working out. Not at least without no. a nano boost. Karu's going to have one for this push. And they will, of course, build a duplicate in a longer fight, but Six Blow already mission accomplished here. Now TQQ going to have a lot more line of sight to punish the Winston on approach. Yeah, certainly not yet for Winston. I also feel like there are a lot of other things we could provide so much more for Insomnia, but it is going to be Leo. Maybe we'll change after the Rage. There's a Nana early up. And the dive in. The field already gone. TQU Dukes. Field back up. The Matrix has to be used. That was almost a dead Cassidy. Now always keep an eye on TQU's health bar, your top right of your screen. See if he, he lives. Winston with the dive. Oh, he barely lives. And the beat comes down from Hiro. Early beat just to save his teammate. There's a dead eye. Now finding the tracer at the end. That's a lot of tools dropped from six below, and they're being pushed. The Anoptrix may drop his primal here if he thinks he has a good angle. I'm not sure if he should, though. It would be very expensive for this push. Here we go. He's on the way, but this Cassidy is being forced to be covered by everyone on the team. There's the primal. And in the meantime, the robot is getting pushed. Insomnia matching some of that distance here during this primal, and in the longer fight, they will win it. A very risky call here from Insomnia, even swapping Undersea back over to the Genji to try to get back to this push faster, and then start to build that Dragon Blade. Does end up working out here. Pressure kind of swapped to Junker Queen. Did not see this one coming. Just wanting to fight the Winston, because the strong thing here for Insomnia is even if they lose this next fight, they're gonna have better distance, so they're gonna go back to that spawn point where the Winston is at its best. The Junker Queen gonna be kind of a pseudo counter to this. Does a ton of damage to Winston, can brawl with him in the front line. And of course, giving that green health mm -hmm. is huge as well in the contests. Let's see how it does, because under he, there's a stake. He's back on that Genji. Yakaru getting the field out and Dukes. Because you're gone from six below. They are being massively pushed, and this is a free touch. 
That's Insomnia in a huge lead. So still six minutes left, so it's not over yet, but it doesn't look too good. There's a fighting grenade. It almost looks like a rampage to me. The, the beam has to come down. No Pressure man. will take out Undersea at least, and they do use the green health to great success here, but now fighting into the neutral point. The Anoptrix and crew should be able to get back over here and look for a good fight. Push on to TQQ where he's going to have the most limited line of sight. See, this is the place I'm talking about here through this choke. Undersea is going to have so much agency and should be able to build a blade. This is the scariest part for Sixplow. Pressure. Yeah. Yeah, it's what happens after the field. Of course, Akuma is doing a great job keeping everyone alive with the immortality oh, field. Oh, yeah. Dead eye from TQQ, everyone Just runs no, away. No LOS here for TQQ. This is the toughest part for the Cassidy. Has to be careful <laughs> shooting that shot onto Genji. Could have that deflect onto your head. There's a Nano and the Rage together. The Rampage does get under C at the end, but with that much extra health, I think Insomnia should still be healthy. So to say, 44. Though, they're out of ults. They need to win this fight here now, try. Dukes. <laughs> that was a close call there, but yeah. now Daisy's down. I think Six Bull have actually successfully done it. Now they can fight their way out of this corridor. Thunder C, he does have the Dragon Blade, but this is not an opportune time to use it anymore as the fight is already lost. Staggered deaths here for Insomnia will allow Six Bull to guarantee this robot gets out of the corridor. And now 40 meters to go to match Insomnia's distance here. No nano just yet for the blade. This is a very awkward moment here for Insomnia where they don't have long range hit scan to use this high ground advantage either. So Six Blow just rolling the robot forward. We'll still have to go about 30 meters to match the point. Undersea holding that Dragon Blade for how long? We'll see. Without the nano. And here he goes. But can't really find the right target as everyone behind the wall is. If he goes behind the wall, he's explosed without the nano. So that blade is almost a waste. It's just a time Mini blade. pressure. And then they, they're not getting anything out of it. Oh, pressure immediately he can down. Thought he had some chance after the blade around the wall. Hall's going very wide. Daisy finds one more on the back. This glow losing a lot of members, oh. even with pressure. Snipe there, and Leonoptics trying to get him at range there, and then they do end up getting the kill. This is. I mean, this might be game losing for Six Blow, the fact that they lost that fight. Pressure dying first. Mm -hmm. Even though the Dragon Blade didn't get high value, they then overextended thinking they were safe. Pressure getting picked. Sound Barrier not utilized in that last fight. And I mean, this distance is just increasing here for Insomnia. 3.30 left on the clock here in Six Blow. See what they can get done, but it's not looking great. Game. And a lot of members off to the side. Again, the defensive feet coming down from Kiru. That's a third from Six Blow. And the sleep dart is good from Karu. Undersea does go down. Well, let's see what further happens in this fight. Still four members up. As Karu DC strikes back with two. And Duke's not able to do the same. And Junker Queen is so reliant on heals to stay alive up in the front line. She doesn't really have escapes like Winston does. She can't just leap out of dodge when they push on her. And every single time, Karo is dropping the anti-nade onto pressure. So pressure just is not able to survive. He's not able to get those heals from Sakume. It's just a Lucio's worth of healing slow otherwise too. So even if he lives through the purple, he's just eventually going to get burned down. Another Rampage is ready. And it's coming soon as Leo keeps hopping into the back line. And pressure does Good on, Ajah. Undersea going down this time. But can they turn it around again? It's happened over and over again. Even without the Genji, Insomnia was able to come back. And uh, pressure this time is full health. Also has the Rampage. If he feels like using it, not this time. Okay, they need to be super efficient with this win that they just took now. Sakabe going to be delayed here, but he is Kiriko, so he should be able to just teleport to an ally pretty quickly. Not going to be a big issue here, but they need to be super ult efficient with these next few fights. Pressure has Rampage. They need to use that to get through this corridor, break the Anoptrix. But I mean, the thing is, if Insomnia just hunker down and use both Leo and Karu's ultimates here, they can just keep them in corridor and burn down that clock. This is the advantage that they have right now. Kitsune Rush also not that useful with this composition here in the corridor as TQQ needs line of sight to be effective. Yeah, here's pressure again. Leo. And that's a Dragon Blade for the back line. Cassidy can't be covered. But that's a one, one more trade, though. 
Duke still has a pulse bomb. Pressure did have to use that rampage. But after that, Clean the members dive. are just falling apart. He doesn't even have to use Look. primal. He might have to now. <laughs> <laughs> And there's Dukes! I mean, the thing is, he opts not to use the Primal here mm -hmm. because, yes, Six Blow is winning the fight. He's not sure if he's going to be able to get value out of it as Karu doesn't have Nano, his DPSs are dead. Yes. But he can use it for the contest of the point itself or the, the distance, right? So, yes, right now Six Blow have control of the car, but they only have 45 seconds to go about 60 meters here. And Leo, if you just push them off the bot in overtime, exactly. that's the end of the round. That's the end of the series. Blink also is going to have a rally to help empower him here, and Karo should be able to build a nano. There's just so many different tools for Insomnia to win this map right now, and then with it, the series. That's what he's looking for. There's the beat again. Defensive one. And trip without the tracer. If they have anything else, it's dead eye. Blink's rally. Ready now, but he's down. No one else to cover him. And that's a further kill, Leo. Doesn't even pop that rage. We'll be seeing it the final second just for the fashion. Seven seconds left, and no one from Zixplo can touch this robot. Such great pressure onto TQQ, forcing out There's the sound barrier. Mage. And that is it. That's the map. They do not need any more ultimates to finish this one off. That push onto TQQ, that forced sound barrier from Kiru. Great team coordination. Insomnia, they do it again. Two. 3-1 victories over Six Blow. We saw the insanely close fan prediction earlier, but it was still Six Blow favored. By 10%, be, I believe. Yeah, it was like 55 for them to 45 of Insomnia, but Six Blow do lose this series again. And right now, Insomnia on track to end up in second place here. But again, if they can defeat Veril, they may end up with first. I mean, there's, there's nothing this team can't accomplish if they can keep being mm -hmm. as coordinated as they were today and in that previous win. Uh, over Six Flow in the regular season. Six Flow also playing a good series. He like, did. They, they this was did. not even a, a mm. collapse. This was not even a, a poor performance from them. It was just Insomnia outclassing them on those last two maps, especially. I think Six Flow really needs to. Okay, because this is Sydney Decider Day, we'll have a lot more matches to go through, right? But I think they are still not adjusted to the loser map choice, or where their maps of their own choice did not really favor their team comp. As Insomnia felt like the dominant team, it felt like they chose the map instead. As the team comp from Six Below didn't really quite accomplish as much, is what I felt from the match so far. They also didn't seem as comfortable with the Winston. Like, theirs wasn't bad by any means, mm. but it was definitely, as you say, they they came into this match, Insomnia, they saying, we're going to play this Winston Echo Tracer as much as we can. And then it was a match, not a dictating of, uh, of composition there from Six Below. It's tough to say who's going to end up getting player of the match as well for Insomnia because I think there's a lot of different players you could choose. Yeah, so there were a lot of crazy points that you can choose from. And we'll find out who that is. Player of the match from Insomnia will be... Undersea. Undersea! I'm pretty surprised by this. Echo I think, Genji. I think at the beginning of the series, he was really fantastic. His Genji was pretty good. We moved into Flashpoint as well. And Undersea, I mean, he played basically every hero because he was also playing Ana, he was also playing Winston, he was also playing Sigma. Um, <laughs> he played Genji, right? He like basically did played every. He also played Tracer. He did. He played everything but like Brigida and Lucio. Um, he had a fantastic performance here. Now I voted for Karu because I thought both his performances and Sakume's were the deciding factors on Midtown, mm -hmm. and then moving into Coliseo as well. He was so good. But Undersea also played Ana really well too. It did yeah. keep Leonatrix alive in some of those critical fights. I think that was a, there's an argument made for Leonatrix as well. Yeah, I voted for Leo. As I was also having an hard moment, I was also indecisive about either Leo or Karu because they also worked as a pair. And as you can see, some crazy moments from this Genji. And one of the rare Genji players in Japan too. Yeah, I feel like Undersea is one of my favorite players to watch this season. He's just so good. Massive hero pool. His coordination with, with Daisy, who also has just one more player of the match over him right now, mm -hmm. pretty insane. Uh, Insomnia has been my biggest e exciting surprise of the season, and that beating Six Blow now twice is massive, and I'd love to see if they could take down Farrell as well. And we'll likely see this rematch going to playoffs, and we'll probably see multiple matches of Undersea taking on Kyuki and Nico from Farrell as well. So. 
Things are really heating up here at the end of OWCS Japan. We're getting to the good stuff now. Yes, as we will have the result for today. 3-0-3-0, but of course there were some close moments, some hectic moments in there. Insomnia, Six Blow, we're expecting a 3-1 or a 3-2. Uh, we do have it. Well, the closest fan prediction we've had so far, 45-55. to 55. 45 did end up winning that final. And this isn't the end, as we will go through more LCQ matches and also the seeding deciders in the yeah. future. So, Arise Project versus Namakuji Brothers, they did take them out 3-0 last time. We'll see if they can do it again or if Namakuji Brothers will come in more prepared with maybe some cool new map picks and bring us to their playoff run. So you can see that G5 match will be what mm -hmm. decides the final playoff team. Yeah, and so we'll have, uh, I think we'll have a look at our standings for the um, the seeder deciding yeah, as well. Every day as you can we will see. have one LCQ uh, and also the two seeding decider match until day number three here. As this is updated, we still, I believe the tiebreaker still works the same. It's match win then the win map differential. Yeah, that's right. And Barrel's still leading right now as Insomnia did drop one of those games, but we'll see what that matchup between those two teams will look like. Uh, as I think we'll take a look at tomorrow's matches. Yeah, so oh, man. here we go. Veryl versus Six Blow, an old classic. Insomnia versus Rivadi should be interesting as well. Last time they met, it was actually Rivadi who took the win 3-1. So see if Insomnia's improvements will shine through this time because I think that was a weaker Insomnia early on in the season. Mm -hmm. Now looking much better. And Namakuji Brothers, man, it might be Nozzle's last game. Uh, so you definitely do not want to miss that one. Yeah. Nozzle time. Might be the final one that we can scream out loud. I mean, I think we'll probably, be back. we'll probably be back next season, but that's not even a guarantee either. So um, enjoy Nozzle while you can. That's what we're going to be looking to do. Arise Project also with some pretty weak gameplay today. So I wouldn't say that they are necessarily hard favorites going mm -hmm. into it, despite having the 3-0 advantage. So yeah, Insomnia Barrel coming up, uh, also coming up the day after. I think that's another really good highlight match. As the seating decider, come to think of it after watching these uh, really good games, I actually enjoy watching more of the top teams actually going against each other. Yeah. Not just for the seeding, but just for us to actually enjoy. And what they actually come up after the MAGA patch. It's been a week since the uh, uh, MAGA reverted back patch. And then now we're seeing these kind of weird team comps. Not, not weird team comps, some uh, specific team comps for the map. And the fact that we have a lot more maps to go through, I think will, will give us a lot more hints going forward. Yeah, I think watching this uh, Cedar match uh, tournament is going to give us a lot of information about what the playoffs are going to look like as well, and who are our clear favorites. So. Just a fun time all around to be an OWCS Asia fan. Huh? That's right. As that is the first day of week number five, we still have two more days for last chance qualifier and also the seeding matches to go through. And come back for tomorrow for more exciting Japan matches. But that's going to be us doing it. Jigjiklaf here, Wolf. See you guys all in Overwatch.